All right, now it's time to get into WWE SmackDown, December 9th, 2005. A uh, oh, very yes. mystical time in wrestling history. <laughs> mystical, <laughs> mythical. A lot of uh, different uh, words you could use for this era of uh, of SmackDown. As, as we said at the top, it's on Fridays. Uh, and uh, that's kind of uh, around the time where I stopped watching SmackDown, I feel like. I didn't really focus I'm on that. Like, I'm closing in, ca- boys. I was My ca- time in wrestling is coming up. Do you know when the exact, like, what you watched last and was like, I'm fucking out of this, or what? No, I actually have no idea. I do know I stopped before the ECW TV show. Okay, oh, wow. and that's okay. 106? So mm-hmm. that's close. Wow. Yeah, oh, we're my closing God. in. Mm-hmm. You- my final days. Because I do remember uh, <laughs> Melina and shit. Now I'll talk about okay. this on this episode. Yeah, do you remember, did you watch the Mania that year? Do you remember that? Which you, one? Oh, sorry, that would be 22, the one we did the fucking SGH on. Was that the one C- in uh, MSG? Cena Triple H. Uh, no, it was in Chicago. No, it's in Chicago. Oh, okay. I was there, brother. Cena I was Triple there. Triple H. Uh, that's uh, the Mickey and Trish match. It's the one that has John Cena and giving Booker D a bulldog or face buster on the poster. On the po- yeah, Ray the, beats Kurt and Orton. The big I don't have time. any. Um, <clears throat> I don't have any like Attachment big to memory that. Sure, to that. Yeah, okay. I'm sure I did. I'm sure it's something I, I mean, looked yeah. at. Yeah. The Edge <laughs> McFoley match. Remember? You remember that match? Is that on that show? Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Wow, okay. Yes, I do remember that one. Okay. Well, all right. So, you, but I don't remember. To... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure. No, okay. no memories of my life <laughs> are attached to that pay per view. So you'd have, no. You'd have a boy, boy girl party for that show? No, nah, it doesn't look like oh. it, man. I actually. Harvey, you win in Money in the Bank? No, that doesn't. Suit nah, you. sorry, man. I, I I don't remember too much of that to be honest. But Tony wants you to fucking remember, man. Oh well, I'm not. It, <laughs> nothing you say, like dude, you go back, see run a, through see a the. Punk was there, bro? Dude. Come on, dude. <laughs> Yeah, man, he abandoned ROH for this. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get into that SmackDown, let's take a look at what was going on in the wrestling world with the observers from uh, the Wrestling Observer newsletter from December fifth, two thousand and five. Uh, Here is a promotional war story. Meltzer writes on November twenty sixth at an. This is about the Gorgonites. Oh, okay. It is. I wish it was. At an AAW show in Berwyn, Illinois, Jimmy Jacobs threw the IWA Mid South title. Into a garbage can. Oh, and fucking shit. God damn and, it. And claimed they owed him money and talked about the promotion. They owe everyone money. Some of its recent <laughs> events. They still owe punk money to this day. <laughs> According to the IWA Mid South website, the next day, Ian Rotten talked with Jacobs and said he did so for a payday from AAW and claimed he didn't tell Rotten ahead of time because it's easier to ask for forgiveness, uh, forgiveness than permission, which I guess is true. Uh, he said he Nobody didn't Nobody was did. working for Ian Rotten to get paid. <laughs> There was no, no, no. There was no payment to be, to be made. <laughs> no. no. Josh Abercrombie was working for Peanuts. Man. Come on, <laughs> he didn't even get that sometimes. <laughs> he was getting slapped in the head. <laughs> Fuck you, you stupid mustache. <laughs> uh, Jimmy said he's, he didn't mean what he did, and the reason he gave uh, he did it was to prove that it was uh, that he didn't get... He, ah, okay, sorry. This is written real fucked up here. He said he didn't mean what You're he did. You're telling me the- that Meltzer wrote something <laughs> yeah. real fucking crazy in the Observer? It's, it's pretty weird worded. Uh, he said he didn't mean what he did, and the reason he gave to prove it was that he said he wasn't getting paid when he really was, and that in the end, it was for pub- publicity for IWA Mid-South. Rotten said he considers it as an act of aggression by AAW, and if anyone is working for AAW, he won't book them for IWA Mid-South, and Jacobs is still recognized as the champion. <laughs> wow! So, are you thinking we should bring I in Jimmy MVPs Jacobs like into DPW and not pay him? <laughs> you know, we get, like, would, would Meltzer finally say something about us? <laughs> if we specifically on the show announce we're not paying him, I think yeah, so, yeah, yeah. We start the show with that. You gotta do something fucked up to be an indie to get listed on here, or yeah. you know, uh, anything we've done is not right. Sadly, <laughs> uh, in TNA news, there was an issue this past week involving Team 3D. They were scheduled as major parts of the November 29th tape. However, the booking committee didn't get word until November 28th that they were in Japan for the Real World Tag League, uh, which is all Japan's Tag League. There was a major miscommunication on the issue. The Dudleys went to Japan, worked the events for All Japan on November 19th, as well as Kirk and Hall on November 20th. Then they were told they had to be there for the tapings for TNA, but given the date of November 22nd, so they left Japan and then showed up and nobody was at the show because <laughs> there was no November twenty second date. They oh, were they were the told. Wrong... That they were told the wrong date. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> wow. So they showed up. Yeah, they were told it, it, it was for the November 29th tapings, but they were told the 22nd, and then they showed up, and they went to the building, and nobody was there. Wow. <laughs> Going did did they go back to Japan? Yeah, I think they had to to finish the fucking tournament. Wow, that's <laughs> not <laughs> That's brutal. I can't fucking that's imagine incredible. taking that Japan flight for something like that, showing up and nobody being there. I'm sure the know. flight back was wonderful. Dude, holy shit. What do you I, I don't know how two thousand and five Japan flights were, but I imagine airplanes sucked ass. <laughs> yeah, I, I from what I understand, they were a ton cheaper. So like Re oh, going really? to Japan was like really cheap because like not oh, a lot of people were sure. going to Japan for a lot of reasons. Like it was like okay. if you if wrestlers were to go wrestle, but right. it's not like the trap like I don't think there was a lot of um tourist travel back and sure. forth at that point. So they okay. were it was actually probably a lot nicer. I couldn't imagine doing that now. Like coming oh back God. and going, like I'd be like, I, I don't know, I'm coming, I don't know, I'm not working for, <laughs> one, of I'm not <laughs> I'm not working for one of these companies. I'm not coming for one of these companies anymore after this day. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> uh, in WWE news, Madison Square Garden is now charging two hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars for rent per night, and that doesn't include staffing for events. Uh, that probably explains why WWE has pulled out because if you take those costs plus advertising, based on drawing fifty-five hundred to eighty-five hundred fans for a house show, uh, which is what they get today, they can't make any money. So. That doesn't even matter anymore. Yeah, you're right. That's, they get what like do you think? $40 million for running Saudi Arabia. They do whatever they want. Yeah, we'll do Dude, a house show. Right. <laughs> we won't <laughs> we'll even do, advertise it. <laughs> we'll do backyard in Vince's backyard. Yeah, they do, they do literally whatever they want. Yeah, <laughs> fuck it. Who cares? I imagine the rent is astronomically different now from Madison Square Garden, right? I hear they, re they renovated it and made it higher. I fucking bet, man. Yeah, yeah I bet it's crazier wow. now. Yeah, that's nuts. They did that to the Manhattan Center in Hammerstein, too, I think. That's right. They, uh, I know, they definitely did it for Manhattan, uh, not, not, did they do it in Manhattan Center? Yeah, I guess they did, didn't the same they? building. Yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah. We got a story here about our good friend, Juventud Guerrera. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> it's been a while, uh, been before a while. we had some good Juventud stories. Says Hoovy <laughs> said, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Dumped you on your head. Uh, so they must be backlogged or something, says Meltzer. Juventud suggested to the SmackDown writers the idea of him doing, him doing his own talk show called The Juice is Loose. <laughs> Don't expect that one to happen. He also, <laughs> which I, he should have. Now, why he not? Should. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, that's why. Yeah, why <laughs> Motherfucker. not? Motherfucker. Uh, he also brought up the idea of <laughs> doing a program with Mysterio, ending with a mask versus mask match. When the obvious question was brought up, noting that he didn't wear a mask, he responded that he would just put one on for the match. <laughs> he responded with, fuck you. <laughs> I'm the juice, fuck you. I fucking wear a mask. <laughs> Long time mask. mask, mask when you, when you don't you. wear a mask. Yeah, I like that, man. Hair. Yeah, I you should have to put it back on is what it was going to be. Oh, that'd be fucking awesome. Oh, you know what, Tony? That's an even better idea. You got to wear the mask now. Yeah, that'd be crazy. <laughs> Bitch. Well, <laughs> when it was brought up to Hoovy that his ideas were all for himself and not for the Mexicals as a group, he noted that Psychosis and Crazy aren't in his league and he should be feuding with the top Holy. guys like Mysterio. <laughs> I guess he didn't get the note that Super Crazy Face Rick F and Blade. <laughs> yeah, no, he had a fucking idea. No fucking clue, man. God, I, I, Hooventood is, uh, what a treasure. What a treasure to pro wrestling. That's awesome. Yeah, he's like legit the most pro wrestling ass dude, like, <laughs> of all time. For, dude, he, I think you've talked about it before, guys that are made for pro wrestling, like Steiner. Hooventood yeah. is a guy made for pro wrestling. Yeah, they couldn't exist outside of this, right? Like, there's just no way. Uh, from the Observer, December 12th, 2005, Tyson Smith, 22 years old, who wrestles as Kenny Omega, was signed to a developmental deal and will start in January with Deep South. While Noah didn't pick him for the uh, scholarship, uh, for the Pro Wrestling Noah scholarship camp put on by Harley Race that Omega attended, John Laurinaitis liked something about him and invited him to Deep South in October for a bigger look and then offered him a contract. Uh, and also signed was Midwest indie wrestler Brad Bradley. What Brad a, what a Bradley <laughs> and Kenny Omega. The, I mean, really, we were looking at two stars right there. Dude, I mean, uh, they both uh, changed the game. Kenny Omega would go on to do something, and then well, who fucking cares? Brad Bradley would go on to fucking invent the boomstick. So. <laughs> Brad Bradley would go on to ruin my fucking life and kill TNA. 
which is very interesting. <laughs> but Kenny Omega, on the other hand, would bypass all of that completely, which, you know, you that, have to respect in some way. You, you do have to respect that. He uh, would go to oh. HDNet and fucking have four-minute matches, and everyone would be like, what the fuck is going on here? And then everybody would tune out. Kenny? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Kenny. Yeah, now, Brad, right. Brad, 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 a couple more things here from the Observer from December 19th, 2005. Matt Hardy has some heat on him in the SmackDown locker room. No. It mainly st- can you guess who this would possibly be Edge. with this heat? Uh, you're, no, but... Uh, Lita. It's a, no, you're... Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Bischoff. Think of somebody that would be just a big pain in the ass in the locker JBL. room. JBL. You're close. Oh, am I getting closer? The Undertaker. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, yeah. There's only a couple of answers there. So. That was a good fucking, you were like right there. That was the guess who of backstage <laughs> ball liquors. If it's not JBL, it's got to be Undertaker. It's like a, <laughs> there's only two answers. Well, Hardy has some heat on him. Uh, it stems from Survivor Series. In the p- closing scene where SmackDown guys were celebrating and Undertaker came in and cleaned house, Hardy sure. was supposed to take a choke slam from uh, Undertaker. Apparently, Hardy told whichever agent that was giving him the word that he was just starting to gain a little momentum and thought it would slow him down. Naturally, this got back to Undertaker. In catering, they were showing the Raw vs. SmackDown match back again. When Undertaker's run-in was shown, Undertaker told whoever was in control to rewind the tape. <laughs> he pointed out when he came in and was cleaning house how Hardy rolled out of the ring and started browbeating him, calling him a mark for rolling out. Dude, even Undertaker does bailout Jesus fucking bullshit. Dude, yeah. <laughs> Dude, first said, off, yeah, go, go ahead. No, I want to okay, hear the rest uh, There's of a little it. more here. He said that they uh, perhaps could have made an angle out of it some way, but basically Undertaker said he wouldn't work with him. He told Hardy to reverse the positions, and if he was the vet on top and some young guy pulled that, how would he feel? He asked Hardy what kind of message did he send to the locker room. Uh, are you better than everyone else, he asked him. Hardy was said to have his head down and just <laughs> took it. Uh, this may have explained why Hardy was buried by Orton uh, later in the show in his long promo and then had an eight-minute edited off uh, his match. <laughs> Damn. Okay, so say? Matt Hardy, young guy, apparently. Mm-hmm. Matt Hardy's been in the WWE for, what, it's 2005, right? Yeah, so he's well, been I here. Mean, him and Jeff were jobbers in, what, 96, 97? Yeah, they, yeah, th- yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, they've been here for legit as pretty much almost as long as Raw's been around, period. Sure, that's yeah, exactly, absolutely. Yeah, you're right. And like, yeah, he wasn't at the top of the car, but he was like very prominently featured in WWE for the entire stint that he was there. Yes. So Undertaker says, yeah, man, why don't you fuck yourself for me? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> don't you, like, hey, man, I'm just going to roll out, I think. I'm trying to, protect, trying to make some money. Just trying to, you know, you pop some rage or whatever. Fucking get in here and let me chunk slam you. <laughs> Dude, That's like, crazy. anybody even noticed it either. Like, I doubt anybody yeah, it was such a nothing What's thing? the one Matt Hardy chunk slam going to do for Undertaker's the career? The crux of this story is me whooping your ass, Matt Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have an angle, one where I kick your ass and beat you. <laughs> How would you feel if the positions were reversed and you whoop my ass? <laughs> I, I want to like let that, that happen. <laughs> <laughs> you are Mark. <laughs> That's great. No, no, no your you name's are Mark. Mark. <laughs> 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 Last piece of news here. Hulk Hogan has been spreading... Uh, well, Lies. Ha- sorry. Hulk Hogan has, <laughs> well, yes. Hulk Hogan hasn't been spreading good cheer of late regarding WWE, saying after all the buys he drew at SummerSlam, his payoff was good if it was the payoff for my limo driver. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Is this after he already got fired for the Mr. America stuff? It has to be. Yes. yes yeah, so he's been in bad spirits with the WWE for a minute now. Well, my limo driver would have got paid that, brother. That's a gnarly line. From yeah, that's like absurd. Unbelievable shit. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> number one shittiest bastard of all time. <laughs> Fucking Mark. No, there you, you go. That was that was that was, that was, that was <laughs> hold on. You're right. <laughs> Just been. That is uh the wrestling news from around the time. Now let's talk about SmackDown, December 9th, two thousand and five. All right, now it's time to get into the actual WWE SmackDown for December 9th, two thousand five. Oh yeah, the world is watching. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. It's one of those? That wow. Time, wow. Very, very interesting time <laughs> in WWE's era of wrestling that they went knew on their, forever. They knew their audience, man, for sure. It didn't uh, dwindle no, they didn't. for years <laughs> after this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we start off here with a cold open. Uh, yes. Randy Orton, of course, survived Survivor Series. Yeah, the third, the third 
Third in was a row. It, yeah, was that was it in a row, Tony? Was that the third what, what straight year in a row he survived the traditional Survivor Series? Oh, yeah, magic. dong. How about that? <laughs> dong. <laughs> Here comes the fucking Undertaker, bitch. <laughs> the Druids come out, and this is uh, when did this happen exactly? Was this last SmackDown or sometime before? Is this, this? after the Survivor Series thing? It, it has after to be the Survivor after. Series match. I don't oh, know if it. I don't know if I caught the exact date this show had. It was on. last week. Okay, last yeah. week. The yeah. druids come out and they <laughs> yes. bring a casket out yes. and then they put it up straight up Alistair Black style. Oh, wait, sorry. That happens at Survivor Series. That's at Survivor Series. Okay. This is That's a quote of recapping sorry. Survivor Series. Yes. Yes. It's so, yes, and then, yes. The druids come out. They bring a casket out, <laughs> Alistair Black style. It gets struck with lightning and catches on fire, which is an insane visual, honestly. I don't know how they pull that shit off. And it's the Undertaker. <laughs> oh! He's back from hell! <laughs> and then uh, Matt Hardy doesn't take a fucking choke slam and it blew the whole angle for me. Dude, they killed it. It pissed me off watching. I was watching, dude. I sat there, little Johnny, 2005. I was fucking, how old was I? Like 13 or something? I'm sitting there, I'm watching. I'm like, dude, Matt Hardy was supposed to take that choke slam. Now it's pissing then I me off. Fucking jumped off my roof. I called him a mark. Okay. But I was mistaken because that's Undertaker's name. Well, he did come out and fuck everybody up, to be fair, yeah, James. He, he did, did, because he's he the Undertaker. Somebody. He is. Well, Undertaker, by the way, coming out, lightning. This is a very cra This is the craziest version of the Undertaker that's ever existed. Yes. Like, this is the most out of pocket, mythical ass Undertaker that they we've are, ever seen up to this point. They are tripling down on his spooky abilities here. Yeah. So mm. he used to be. The guy came out and then like they'd sell like it's good and colder in here. Yeah, you can, you can feel the temperature changing. I mean, he would do changing. the lightning spot, but that was like, yeah, but the lightning never. Anything. Yeah, the lightning never really did much. It was just like, yeah, whoa, he kind of cool. like does that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, the druids, brought a casket out and then <laughs> it got struck with lightning, caught on fire, and the Undertaker returned from a portal in hell. <laughs> This is crazy just to come into Survivor Series. Yeah, well, that's his, like crazy, man. So you're right. It's his return after I think Orton loaded Undertaker up into the back of Eddie Guerrero, who had recently passed away, his low rider, and drove it backwards into the SmackDown stage and killed Undertaker as well. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Wow, yeah, that's how he died. what the so fuck? He, he killed Undertaker with Eddie Guerrero, who had died. Scar. Yeah, through the, I mean, through the fucking set, like the set piece at the top of the ramp. And then it exploded and fucking like caught on fire. He killed him. What He's, the fuck is the engine in the back? What did that hit? <laughs> well, he put, well, he know, put explosives in the trunk before. Holy he shit. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, well, Eddie explosives the all the time in the trunk. Bob or, well, Cowboy Bob did it. <laughs> Holy shit. Sticks of dynamite thrown in there. <laughs> he backs the car up, up, destroys the set, blows it up. <laughs> yes, That's so crazy. You could just rest. You could hit the RKO on him. You could pin him. <laughs> he wanted yeah. to kill him. He wanted to get rid of him. He could him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he could roll said, another bailout. And, yeah, yeah, come on, he man. said he killed the Undertaker and that he is the one true phenom now. He's How the can only you kill the left. dead man, huh? He did it. Tell Tony Wong killed him. Didn't. Kill him. Killing him wouldn't even do anything. You would want to pin him. You'd want to beat the, <laughs> the phenom, right? Not kill him. Anyways. Well. <laughs> That's what he did. He killed him. But guess what, man? Undertaker fucking... Did you not catch the part where the lightning struck the casket and he got <laughs> fired? He returned That's from hell? That's how it works. They, they watched one Friday the 13th movie and they said, oh, Is he's back. Is that only work for him? Or like if we... like, Let's just say in theory, I kill Tony for whatever reason. Could you bring him back that way, you think? With no, like lightning and mythical powers and... Uh, he would come back know. as zombie Santino Morello. <laughs> That's true. I'd be green. That's on Andy. Finley. <laughs> oh, yeah, that could work too. <laughs> so Taker then speaks over the PA from hell. <laughs> <laughs> because under, because everyone on SmackDown has watched Saw recently. So this it's, leg, it's legit like, hello, Zep. It's like, hello, Randy. This is it's not the same on this thing. fucking show, by the way. This is a no, cold is a open recap. that is recapping <laughs> yeah. all this shit. So, so, dude, yeah, as James said, fucking ominous voice from hell over the speaker. Over the hello. PA. <laughs> and and it, he legit says, hello, Randy. How's your lips? <laughs> he says, this is The Undertaker. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what else would it be? Uh, what the fuck else is it? Matt Hardy. This is... <laughs> 
<laughs> this is DDP. I'm a pervert. <laughs> Coming for your wife. Bob, you <laughs> This is Matt Hardy. I blew the angle. Sorry. <laughs> and now I'm getting. Now I'm in hell. <laughs> with Undertaker's here with me. <laughs> he said it was super hell. You said Eddie was down here. I didn't see him. Sorry. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow. You remember that promo? That's right around this time. I'm pretty sure. It, it is, might have just yeah. happened. That's where Actually. the lowrider stuff came in, right? Is yeah, it the same it was... episode? It might be. Yeah. Oh is it the same God. episode? It wow. Might be. Tony. Oh, that yeah, wow. that that would track, right? Because it's Eddie's car. Let's just say it is, Jesus. and then piss off everybody that does that is knows we're wrong. Dude, well, I love doing that, Tony. It's one of my favorite things to do. Well, lightning strikes again uh, here. He tries to stop Orton from leaving. Then Orton tries to leave through the crowd. He pulls back some drape, and then there's a casket standing Dude. there. <laughs> what the what? fuck did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Druids are just sending up caskets all over the building. And Taker says, you look lost, boy. You don't know where you're going, do you? Randy, you're going with me. Straight to a two hundred thousand buy pay per view. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> hell in a cell, oh, dude. Fuck. It was so, it was so stupid. You're going to hell. Oh, that's cool. In a cell. Oh, fuck. Ah. You just ruined the line. <laughs> there is so much to unpack cool. here. This was one of the most insane cold opens I've ever seen for a WWE show in general. Period. Somehow it's. Not as crazy as the shit that happens on this show, though. Do you think that this <laughs> worked? Like, do you think this angle, like, we'll talk, we'll break down, I like, this episode it. leading into Armageddon. Like, do you think, you know, Rand, for whatever it's worth, Randy had a ton of fucking angles with dudes. Like, he top did. level yeah, he did. guys. He was a big angle guy, he, yeah. He had a ton of heat, too. Like, because I don't remember, like, I don't remember me as a kid going... I'm buying into this one. You know what I, I mean? mean? Like, I'm getting I, that Armageddon show. I can't remember if I did I, or not. I definitely, well, I remember it. So I guess I don't know if that, I don't know how you weigh that, but it's at least memorable. I don't know if it's good or memorable. Like, the stuff, there's a couple things on this show. I specific, like, that's why we got picked it, obviously. Like, I remembered happening. So, and I remember the Hell in a Cell match. So I guess it did its job. How long does Undertaker, and I, you know, we don't have to sit on it okay. too much here, but sure. how long does Undertaker keep doing this campy shit? Because obviously he, like, stops doing it at some point. Is it after um, the Benoit stuff? Yeah, I don't, see, I don't know. I feel like he's, because eventually he's him, a while, and, right? him and Kane do, like, a fucking angle in 2010 where they kill Paul Bearer. I feel like he goes through 2010s <laughs> for sure, yeah, right? Yeah. He does stuff with the Dudley heavy... Boys, right? When did he do the Dudley Boys? Was oh, that they, yeah, that's right. They That was, uh... That was after this. Was that 2010 where they embalmed him in the? No, concrete? no, that was, I it was 2007. I, like was... I want to say. Oh, the Undertaker Dudley stuff was 2004. Okay, sorry. Oh that fuck, it was had... before this. Oh fuck, don't that yell at me. I'm happened. sorry. I thought it was later. Um, no, but yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't know, James. I feel like for, in my mind, this doesn't stop. <laughs> I don't really remember. No, it there stopping. was definitely a period where I came back to like watching wrestling for oh, a when bit. When he's with Sean, you think? And like Taker is doing nothing. He's like. He's, he's like, dude, he's just a like guy they bring in. Yeah. And like, he's like, he's just vet okay. taker, but yeah. still yeah, the dead they just man. Brought in, they just brought him in as like an attraction kind of guy, you know, we'll sure. put him on the card and people see it or whatever. Yeah, You know what, James, I guess I'm looking through it here. It does. I, yeah, I don't really see him doing as much spooky shit after this. Like he goes on to the Mark Henry thing where he faces him in the casket match. So maybe there, um, but then he feuds with great Collie and great Collie fucks him in his ass. Yeah. That was, uh, uh one of the greatest moments this ever existed. <laughs> there was also the, uh, you know, I'm thinking about it, you know, the video game SmackDown versus Raw, like a mm -hmm. lot of the the mm -hmm. campy shit, like that was like, what, 9, 10, 11? Yeah. Right? Sure. So, like, there had to, unless they just pulled it from those years, like like this year or whatever, and they're like, oh, we're going to stick with this. We're just going to keep, because like video this. game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You might be right. Um, yeah, yeah. Because I don't, like, you know, the Sean era stuff, he wasn't really doing any of that, right? No, I think the Sean stuff was like, no, Sean I guess uh, veteran. Yeah. yeah, what it looks like here is 2007 is when it kind of ends. Okay, yeah, because like, right. he wins uh, the Royal Rumble. Rumble in 2007, yeah. and then he kind um, of stops actually can't be. <laughs> 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 nah, but I imagined, yeah, because I remember when I tuned in every once in a while, he was just doing kind of like vet taker stuff. It's like be, just having a match with Taker was like a big deal. So like 
yeah. he turned into almost big match taker. He's he's definitely big match taker here. Like he's not yes. going to show up to just work whatever. I think at some point over the next few years, he does just kind of they like need him on SmackDown to draw. Like they have mm-hmm. to have him on the show because I think they do stuff with like Ezekiel Jackson and Vladimir Kozlov, Kozlov and shit yeah. like that, right? So like. They definitely at one point they're like, we need you on a fucking show on a weekly yeah. basis. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. So like he t- he tapped into that actually when they wanted him to lose to Ken Kennedy. <laughs> he said, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm a vet now. Fuck you. I'll make you a chair. Well, he's not here tonight to actually kick Kennedy. Sadly, sadly. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But uh tonight on SmackDown, Chris Benoit and Booker T are in match three of their best of Sarah seven series for the US. Best title. of Sarah, would you say? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. I apologize. No problem. I'm an L. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'm not. So, like, I like to stay up here. So. I feel like we talked about the SmackDown intro like a couple episodes ago. The white background SmackDown intro. Yes, we did. We mentioned yeah. it. Did, we, did you guys like this one? I don't remember. No. Yeah, I wasn't uh, crazy about it either. It, it does have the iconic Heidenreich moment, though. with the Dude. Oh, screaming? Yeah. <laughs> the screaming Heidenreich I wrote moment. that one down. Dude, that was the only one I wrote down. I legit wrote, I forgot Heidenreich the was in this fucking I laugh LSD every time I see that shit. <laughs> the gif, yeah. <laughs> with the Road uh, Warrior uh, shoulder pads Road on. Road Warrior yeah, Heidenreich, of course. I was yes, so course. excited to see... He's the new Power Warrior, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he should have been nuts. on this. Well, we start off the show here, uh, JBL's Town Hall. <laughs> oh, yeah, before this, they say uh, the tagline of uh, How I Knew It Was on oh. Friday Nights. Uh, SmackDown is TV that's changing Friday nights. It's well, changing it Friday nights. No, Sorry. it didn't. Did not. That's, it actually hurt did. wrestling on Friday nights for the foreseeable future. No, now you can't go out. You got to stay home and watch wrestling. <laughs> Tape <bro>. SmackDown. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, we got JBL Town Hall here to open things up. He comes out here with a uh, little eye patch on. He does, And Cole says, what's the eye bandage? Uh, and <laughs> what's Jillian, the uh, deal <laughs> with the bandage? Uh, I, I don't. Do they explain? Like, what, did he get poked in the eye? What happened? Yeah, he got yes. poked in the eye. Yeah. The referee okay. poked him in the eye. Oh, well, that's fucking <laughs> unfortunate. Well, Jillian's out here, and she has the big fucking mole gimmick on her face still. Boogeyman has not bitten this off yet. Oh, man, it's coming, though, I think. It, yeah, we're definitely, soon. you know what? We'll talk about Boogeyman here in a minute, uh, and I will talk about a little more it's about the Boogeyman and his spot on the show. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yes, Jillian Hall, who is JBL's image consultant, does okay, have yes. a fucking big-ass gimmick on her face. I don't even know yeah. what it was supposed to be. It was a big mole, I think. He Vince had just watched Austin Powers. Is that <laughs> it? The movie? Austin Powers I th- thing? I think so. I, I think I, I remember, I swear I remember that, that somewhere. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, they, and like, it's the most ridiculous looking thing I've ever seen in my life. It's fucking nuts looking, yeah, man. man. It's gnarly. It looks like a fucking uh, cinnamon roll. <laughs> who, who came up with the idea of Boogeyman eating it? Probably Vince or He's the like, Boogeyman. You eat it. <laughs> You're a God freak. Darn. Just eat it. <laughs> well, he is a fucking freak. Well, you're, like I said, you're 40, baby. <laughs> Just eat it. <laughs> Maybe 30. <laughs> Not too sure. Well, JBL says, I want to thank you all for the love and support you have shown me through this horrible injury. Sugar Ray Leonard cut his career short with an injury that was less than this one. <laughs> my sure. doctor has recommended that I end my Hall of Fame career, but uh, I'm not doing that. And what bothers me the most is that people actually believe that I deserted Ray Mysterio because he teamed with Ray last week to face... The tag champions, the Raw tag champions, <laughs> Big Show and Kane, who are on SmackDown. Hell yeah, come on. Uh, it was a SmackDown <laughs> anniversary or something momentous. It was know, Super whatever. SmackDown. Ah, what well, was Super some about milestone. it? The Raw guys were there? Big Show and Kane were on it. This is a super they, show because the guys that are on the better show are here. <laughs> they needed ratings is what they needed. Yeah. yeah. Well, he said he stood by Ray through a terrible injury against Kane and Big Show, and the reason they lost is because Ray didn't do his part. Uh, and the correct thing to do is to retire to his fantasy life of money and wealth, but he understands that people with more have to give to people with less. And you people saved up your hard-earned money to come see me, and because of your support, I will not retire! And he takes off the eye bandage, and it's his eye is fine. <laughs> There's nothing, not even gimmicked under there. Oh, come on, man. He was poking an the eye. eye by a referee. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking referees, man. Always getting in the way. Uh, but he will give you people Mr. Smackdown and a reason to live, and to give you people a wrestling god. Well, he's facing off against Rey Mysterio here. Oh, how about that? Well, Rey's also fucking injured here. <laughs> yeah, so Big Show powerbomb Rey on top of the low rider on Super SmackDown, I believe. Yeah, Rey, Rey yeah, yep. jumped off the top rope, 
Big Show caught him on the floor and powerbombed him on the hood of the lowrider. That's what they describe it as. It's not a lowrider, the lowrider. Sure. And then Show and Kane hit high times <laughs> on Rey Mysterio, which is nuts. <laughs> that was awesome. And that is why his stomach is bandaged. He's fucked up. You have to understand that Ray and JBL are injured at the same level. Okay. It's an equal amount of fucking pain here. Can't you see the pain JBL's in? Ray was power bombed off the top, fucking hit with high times by two of the biggest <laughs> Raw champions of all time. JBL was poked in the eye by the referee. <laughs> you have yeah. to understand. Well, sure. well, Sugar Ray Mysterio would have fucking retired from an injury like JBL had. But the wrestling guy is not. <laughs> Taz calls JBL a one eyed monster at one point. I that was oh hilarious. my. Hey. <laughs> Taz and Cole take unbelievable liberties throughout this Dude, entire Taz show. Taz is on some night, you know? I don't know <laughs> what's is, going on with Taz. This is Mike Tanay and Taz levels it of is, fucking bullshit. It is. Yeah. Dude, at one point, JBL gets backed into the corner and Ray just repeatedly keeps poking him in the eye. Yeah, that was <laughs> awesome. Like four or five times. <laughs> I pug cheese. Dude, Ray Mysterio comes out here Taz 99 style. He does. He was <laughs> that. That's crazy. I don't know. I wrote down he looks like a tiny Taz or a normal Taz. Actually, <laughs> Taz even said nothing. I don't think he's no, he a normal like a Taz. <laughs> <laughs> he literally had he literally had the towel on his head, the black towel too. It wasn't even a white one. It was a black towel, just like Taz. Right Taz head. was taking the stuff to make fun of Cole throughout the entire show. Instead, You're, he so. had a whole list. <laughs> also, all the, all of the replays on the show are brought to you by Xbox 360. That's so fucking. Did lit. this just come out? Let's see, 2005. Let's see, Halo 2 Did came you... out on the original Xbox 2004 into the year. Okay. Uh, so I would imagine, yes, the 360 had to have come out this year. November okay. two, uh, 2005, November 22nd, 2005. Oh, okay. So just right around this. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, yeah, fucking, it's 360, so man. Where are my 360-ites at, man? I yeah. was a, dude, hell fucking yeah, man. Fuck that PS3 bullshit, Yeah, you're brother. playing, no you were on way. the Trey Brotherhood, bro. You're a bitch and a loser. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, we were rocking 360 sticks crazy, man. Fuck with us. We had the arcade. Are you kidding me? Like, come on, yeah, man. Fuck we had yeah, Netflix brother. watch party. You fucking, we had one versus dude, 100. oh my God, Netflix you know, watch Dorito parties. Crash one versus, course? Doritos Crash Course, hell yeah. Dude, uh, the Xbox 360 indie section where, like, games were, like, a dollar. Dude, that was, shit the was best, awesome, bro. You know, never had a 360 if you didn't wrap it in a towel you don't even know <laughs> i had so crazy. many variations of the 360 tony i had did you yeah man because they, they kept coming out with them i was like oh these are dope as fuck i actually want to get these man <laughs> i still have my first version white one that's all dusty and stuff it's does it work up. it sounds like a it's like the last sometimes <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. so, uh, that's it's the way to crazy, fucking play it dude if you can't hear your xbox 360 you didn't have a real xbox 360 you're right, that's you're how it right. is with all consoles nowadays man ps4 is running on jet Fumes, it feels like <laughs> and shit, every time I hear somebody loaded up, I know I know you're playing on. Golly, it's either it's either my PS5 or my air conditioner. <laughs> Can't crazy, really tell the difference. Man. Uh, Ray does a tilt to our head scissor and goes for the six one nine. All of a sudden, Ray's running for the six one nine, and the fastest human being I've ever seen in my life, Orlando Jordan, shows up, pops up, and annihilates Ray with a clothesline. That was fucking awesome. Yeah, so anyways, Batista's here, right? Come on, yeah, right? Let's That's what go. it's all about. Yeah, but Batista in attire three, business attire. <laughs> that is so sick, though. His Sunday best. This is Sunday best Batista, and he's here to kick your fucking ass. Also, also world heavyweight champion, by the way. Just let you Oh, know. yes, world champion. That's true. Uh, yeah, he, you know. he makes a save for Ray, and his, his Sunday best is a great way to put it. <laughs> uh, and JBL and Orlando Jordan Powder, they're getting out of here, but... Hold on a second, player. Teddy Long is here. And I said, oh, fuck. Hello, oh, hello, hello. fuck. No, not the main event of this show, please. Why? Why They're can't, we watch, a Why can't we watch a show without a tag team main event? Why? Dude, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a good episode if it didn't have a tag team main event, I tell you that. Well, it wouldn't be an episode. That's true. <laughs> You're right. Was, we accidentally fall into these. JBL, Teddy says, JBL, why don't you wait just right there? Seeing as you have a lot, you've been doing a lot of walking around lately, but not tonight, player. Seems to me that you're getting your cabinet back together. So tonight, it's going to be a tag team match. It'll be JBL and Orlando Jordan taking on Rey Mysterio and Batista. And all the while uh, Teddy Long is explaining this, JBL is selling his eye and pointing to his eye saying, ow, my eye hurts, I can't <laughs> Which is true because his eye is injured. Well, Taz says, wait a minute, brother. JBL just wrestled one match hurt. And Cole says, would you give me a break? Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> Tessa, hey, fuck oh. you, man. For real, <laughs> fuck you. And then it cuts back to the ring, and Ray is being cradled in Batista's arms. Yeah, very rom-com rom style. <laughs> I 
Why is he all, why is he holding him like that? Come on, that's fucking bro beast, down. right? That was cute that's as hell, man. That's for real. Up. That's my favorite tag team right here. It'd be a shame if he fucking turned on him. He's on the <laughs> bed. He better be his fucking friend, goddamn it. God damn it, man. What'd you yeah. do that for? You know how hard it is to find a bro to jump into your arms like that? Come on, man. Fuck Dude, you. I can't do that to you, man. Fucking hey, come I'll on in. Blow out my back. <laughs> yeah, me too. I fucking what? can't do shit no more. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. I just gotta blow out your back. Unless. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what's going on over there? Oh, sorry, sorry, Tony, sorry, 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 sorry. We didn't mean it, Tony. Sorry. Right. So, Randy Orton is walking backstage in his With NWO. <laughs> <laughs> Randy Orton has insane 2005 spiked hair. <laughs> he does. He does. It's almost like the guy from the TNA show we watched the other week. Just he, he definitely oh, thought man. about it. This is like, yeah, I can't. Exp- you have to see it to believe it. Like it's so it's, face, Randy. Yeah, with the spike joint up front, no fade or anything, full length sides, yeah. fucking spiked front, crazy looking hair here. Uh, <laughs> and of course, yes, his father Bob Orton is also here, and his arm's not broken, his- which is fucking weird. It is weird, but he has hepatitis, which is, you know, that's fine. That's no. a good replacement. No. <laughs> I don't know if that was ever confirmed for confirmed, but I remember that being like the story that like when they bleed in the hell in a cell because they fucking bust his shit open in the hell in a cell. Like he bleeds all over Daker and he has hepatitis. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's insane. <laughs> That's crazy. Peter wonder- Griffin with hepatitis? <laughs> God damn it. Peter. So I went out to 2005 uh, hair, hepatitis? spiky hair, uh-huh. and I found Randy Orton. <laughs> I want 2005 hepatitis. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what Randy Orton looked like 2005. Dude, Randy that Orton. is his cut. It's like, <laughs> but it's like flattened in the back, to like halfway up his head. So it's just like the front piece. But like. Yeah, he's not blended into the sides at all. It's just like fucking no, yeah, yeah, yeah. raw <laughs> dog and Malcolm in middle. <laughs> Shit's crazy, man. Um, but yeah, so Bob Orton says, Randy, are you sure you want to do this? You want to fucking, do you want to face the Undertaker? Randy says, sure thing. I'm going to call him out right now. So now it's time for the Randy Orton Town Hall. Yeah, he, uh, he's here to call out the Undertaker. And he is, uh, he charges down the ring. His uh, fucking theme is playing and he's, he's all business here. He's not fucking around. He gets in the ring and he says, Undertaker, Undertaker. I'm sick and tired of it. Dude, Orton says man so many times in this that I feel like he was high. Like this was like a brothered out Randy right here trying to fucking just get his job done. He says, I'm sick and tired of these mind games. It's not fair, man. You're messing with my head and I'm this close to snapping, man. I'm sick of the mind games, man. You're making me insane. (laughs) He says man 4,000 fucking times. Then all of a sudden, Randy Orton's Tron and his music start playing, and he says, what the fuck? Yeah, but then it starts to distort, and then go backwards, and go forwards, and speed up, and slow down. Is Undertaker, like, in the production truck in full gear, fucking next no, they, to Kevin Dunn? That's just his, his powers, you know? He's got the supernatural power. Remix? I he was, like, directing Kevin Dunn to slow it down. Speed that's it the up. remix from hell. He's got, it, he's got it, like, written up, man. That's like a YouTube theme song mashup. Oh fuck! Yeah, people don't make it like that no more. No, no way. <laughs> no, Where you just speed it up or slow it down? No, right, Axel match up. That's what people have been asking for right here. The Jerry Show. Jerry Show. Well, you know I got you. You know I got well, you. Know I got you. Well, not that song. <laughs> that Orton says, neat, uh, "This is what I'm talking about, Taker. You think this is funny? You think you're getting to me, man? I don't want to fight, man." I want you in this ring. I don't want you to Armageddon. I want you right here, right now, man. Uh, man, man. <laughs> he says, man. He says, I want to resolve this man to man, man. man I want to resolve this man to man, man. <laughs> come out, take her. Come, I think he says, come out, take her like a hundred times. Like, get to the point. I don't and he starts like crying. Down. He's like fucking weeping in the ring because fucking Taker won't come out. He's pacing back and forth and he says, Undertaker, I don't want this to be bad. I don't want it to be like this, man. Maybe I made a mistake. I'm done playing games. Come on, man. He's almost crying. And then the lights go out. Gong. And they show some words on the Tron. I don't remember him saying this, but it's uh, it's Taker like uh, speaking, and it says the words he's saying on the screen. It says, the gates of hell are open night and day. And it said Virgil said that. I don't remember that. <laughs> Virgil didn't say that. Virgil said the meat sauce. Meat team. <laughs> 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 the gates of Olive said, Garden are open <laughs> night and day. <laughs> Fuck money, Virgil. <laughs> 
Dude, why is Taker answering this shit like someone on Tumblr? Like, this was some real Tumblr ass shit. Like, just Dude, playing it was a bunch like of in quotes. A, in a cursive type font or like a demonic font, too. Yeah. 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 I uh, thought he was going to start going down like signs and shit like Mercury is rising. Right. Like, <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Live, laugh, love. Yeah, dude, some real crazy shit. <laughs> the torture of a bad conscious is the hell of a living soul. <laughs> John Calvin. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? Realize, realize, real lies. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Bob, we gotta get the fuck out of here. Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> Dude, there was one in here that said to different minds, the same world is a hell and a heaven. And it was by a dude named Ralph Waldo Emerson. Emerson. <laughs> Crazy ass name of this dude. Dude, this is like Chad GPT out of his mind for 2005. Like, give me 10 quotes that are spooky. Give me know, 10 just, quotes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just give me an Undertaker promo. Abandon all hope. You who enter here, Dante. <laughs> From Clerks. <laughs> I'm not even supposed to be here today, Dante. In a row. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> so during all of this, also, they're showing clips of Undertaker throwing mankind off the Hell in a Cell and hanging the big boss man. <laughs> Yeah, that is crazy. I, I'm actually surprised they like referenced that here. Me too. I thought that was like... For, like, they will not be referencing that in a few more months. No fucking way. <laughs> I don't no think fucking so. way. <laughs> that goes good in pretty quick. So. Well, Randy Orton, you're in the fast lane now, boy. The fast lane on the highway to hell. And it cuts back to Randy, who's joined the Blue Man Group. Very sweaty as well. Dude, super sweaty, super <laughs> zoomed in on his hair. Yeah, this is a fucked up looking dude right here. This is Undertaker's blue purple lights just casting over him. He looks fucking insane. Enjoy the ride. And then the Orton is just uh, hugging the rope in uh, fear, I guess. Uh, and he's trying to figure out when Virgil said the gates of hell are open at day and night. <laughs> day and night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we go backstage. Crystal is outside Booker T's locker room. Do you like Booker T's fucking nameplate in flames? I thought that was yeah, awesome. Yeah, that was sick. <laughs> I always <laughs> liked that they had like the little logos. The custom like, Johns? Know? Yeah. Yeah. Felt like oh. Crush Hour or some shit. Oh, that's a, yeah. The, dude, Crush Hour gave them, like, they had to legit, like, make, oh, fuck, this guy's never had a t shirt. Uh, give, uh, give Billy Gunn a logo. Yeah, here. And they're coming <laughs> up with some crazy shit. The kisses and all that. They rock. <laughs> well, Charmel opens the door. And says, uh, yeah, dude, this is want? funny as fuck, by the way, this, uh, this whole Booker T thing. No, no, no. I just wanted to say that Booker T is like his comedic timing here is so good. Yeah. He's not only like super good, but he's also like a fantastic worker too. And he like, it, it's legit every time. I mean, obviously, you know, United States title is nothing to fucking sneeze at, but it's crazy to me that it. He's not a main event guy at this point. He's still no, so fucking no good. He looks not incredible. Yet. His gimmick is fucking sweet. And he can work his ass off. How did this guy not... How is he not in the main event of the show? I think that's why I went to TNA, right? He was like, I'm just fucking sick of this shit. Yeah, like, that's true. Nothing's happening. I'm not going to go anywhere. Let's just fucking just go. Well, that's not going to go anywhere. He's going to do nothing good in TNA ever. He's not, it sucks. Should've well, yeah, done. sadly, you know, nothing he ever did was good ever. You know, whatever, whatever, whatever. I think, did we talk about that? Because I read that somewhere recently. He talked about his TNA run again. Like, he was like, he went there in hopes that he would, like, be able to wrestle guys like Joe and AJ and do a lot of good stuff. And he said he barely wrestled any matches and he didn't do anything. And he thought this, the writing was just bad. He did say that, but like you got to do, like you got to call most of your promos. Like yeah, it's it not was, like they wrote them for you. It was fun as <laughs> yeah. fun too. He's like, yeah, the promos were real bad. He he he, he did all the promos. <laughs> 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 They're like, he's like, yeah, I gotta go do this movie, so I gotta do this accent or whatever. Like, yeah, you do whatever you want. Yeah, you know, so I didn't really like the whole accent <laughs> the thing. Accent was stupid. <laughs> uh, buddy, you did your that. idea. <laughs> yeah, all these are your ideas. And he definitely faced AJ. Not only did he face AJ, but he did a few of fucking Bobby Roode and shit. Like, yeah. And that was pretty like early on in his run. And then he got to do Main Event Mafia, which is like which is held awesome. as like one of the coolest TNA shit they ever did. Yeah. So, like, I, if I remember, he had a match with Joe, didn't he? Like a pay per view match and stuff. I, he too? probably did. Yeah, he did, Tony. I'm pretty but sure that's you're not right. How I wanted it, brother. Well, it was it was stinky <laughs> right. Joe. It wasn't fucking. <laughs> yeah, it was wasn't the Joe. good Joe. <laughs> <laughs> he had a cock on his face, brother. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't 2005 Joe, which you should have left a year before that, then, brother. <laughs> yeah, come on. Yeah, you're right. Could have faced him in IWA Mid South, dude. That would have been fucking insane. Before she opens the door, I wanted to just tell you how ridiculous Crystal is. She goes, "Hi, okay. it's me, Crystal. I'm outside Booker T's room and here to see if he's ready for an interview." Like she doesn't. She just goes up There's to no it. There's no prep. Yeah. She's just hoping that he's there. Like I don't know. All right. 
Uh, so Sharma opens the door and says, what do you want? And Chris says, oh, I'm here for an interview with Booker T. And you, of course. And in the, in the background, you can hear Booker yell, who is that, baby? And <laughs> Sharma goes, that girl, Crystal. And he says, oh, hell yeah, I'm here. <laughs> you <better run> here. <laughs> you want a scoop, don't you? Oh, hell yeah, I'm here, man. I'm here. That was so fucking funny. He said, you want a scoop, don't you? You're looking for a scoop from the five time. You want to know what's going time. on with Booker T and Benoit? And then behind him is a whiteboard. He starts writing. It, it says Benoit and Booker on the whiteboard. And he writes, Benoit zero, Booker two. And then after tonight, Booker three. <laughs> That's what's going on right here. Booker T is doing his thing. And last week, me and my wife, me and my baby, we got to do commentary. I got attacked. Somebody should have called the police, but that's another story. <laughs> he's he's going to sneak attack me. I'll be right there in his face. It's going to be three to zero. Get ready to get your brooms out for this big sweep. <laughs> now, can you dig that? And Charmel says, sucka. And they both look at her and he says, now bounce on out here. Bounce on out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, this might be my goat, man. I don't know. Like, I, I, it always so, goes back and forth in my head. Every time we watch this, I'm like, wow, Booker is, Booker does no wrong. Nah, yeah, he's he's awesome. also one of my favorite commentators ever. I mean, it's... He, yeah, he really is good at in all facets of the wrestling business. He does pretty well. I wish you would stop talking shit about TNA, though, Booker. I'm begging <laughs> you to stop talking shit about TNA. Please, for the boys. Yeah, Come on that's now. it. That's all I need you to do is stop talking shit about TNA. And let Ryback back on your show. Yeah, Ryback. Well, right back, so really, if you want to get <laughs> yeah. the twofer. Both of them. You know, yeah. I mean, do that real big. Oh, yeah. Well, Curtis Axel's lost in the jungle or something. I'm not sure what's going on. What right. happened to Curtis Axel? <laughs> I'm not sure. What'd I'm you do that. to Curtis Axel? <laughs> You'll find out. We're going to rock this mother. Give me some of that. <laughs> We're going to rock this boat. <laughs> well, Armageddon is brought to you by Xbox 360. Oh, yeah. Taz fucks up the read. I can't imagine how loud Vince was yelling at a beer. Joey Mer it's Joey Mercury versus Super Crazy, by the way, is the match here. And uh, fucking Eminem are coming out together. Uh, Cole says, uh, I see you entering the ring like that, Taz. And Taz says, I'd be there to this day. Uh, you wouldn't need to take me out on a helicopter, an ambulance helicopter, the lights and sirens and all that. Anyway, SmackDown's brought to you by Armageddon, sponsored by fucking Armageddon. Comes to you live Sunday. He just starts laughing. <laughs> the call has to take over for him. <laughs> So yeah, we have Joey Mercury versus Super Crazy. Yes. Um, they have Eminem Paroma. come out. <laughs> they have Eminem come out with their whole entrance, and they used that to they stole from the Backseat Boys. Dude, I swear to God, on TV they used to show the back shot from Relina, but they did they not. They did. Show they it did. Either. I wasn't telling Deb when I was watching, but I said, "What the fuck in my head?" Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I used to. I started like yelling around my house when I didn't see. So I like flipped my shit over and started like throwing my chair across they the room. Definitely, but maybe when they moved to Fridays, you can't show ass. No cheeks bullshit. In the hole. I think they changed it in post. No, they, I, I'm. They changed what? it in really? post. I feel like they did, yeah, because I remember it. I remember it. Dude, Tony, me, me too. Dude, I remember the it fucking for sure. Deep, bro. I know it happened. Nah, man, I've they were, they were showing her ass crack crazy style. That her shit was hole. fucking super sick, dude. Like, and I remember. Yeah, let the pitches loose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe means, sometimes. Yeah. Uh, well, he was saying, is that, is that mellow yellow? Canary yellow? <laughs> yeah, what's that yellow? yellow that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, me. I, I mean, I'm not going to let y'all slide. I'm not going to let y'all slide on not showing the crazy yeah, entrance from Melina. Please. That's like the Your whole app gimmick. is called Peacock. Yeah, <laughs> come on, man. You're tripping. Tell him, Tony. Um, and then you have Super Crazy come out with the Mexicals fucking bass theme song, bass entrance. <laughs> Mexicals with the fucking goats. Uh, I'm, the I'm sad beers. that the juice things, they all suck. <laughs> dude, I know. I know. That sucks, bro. Dude, Super for some probably, reason... He probably is why the I group just died. Remember James, I just remember you, James, tweeting out like the Mexico theme song. You were like ri driving your car. Driving my car with the Mexico theme song. Yeah, dude. <laughs> That's just like a grade in my head because you just tweeted out randomly one day. Those are dude, like... Three of my favorite motherfuckers of all time, man. Those are the craziest bastards they ever lived, awesome. man. The fucking Mexicals. On the Juan <laughs> <laughs> Deer's leopard print seats. Dude, that shit was crazy as fuck, man. They got the fucking, they got the zero turn for the pay-per-view. That shit was crazy as hell, man. <laughs> They're all that shit. That was fucking base. I like that. That is sick. Um, well, anyways, the Mexicals beat the dicks last week. The dicks. <laughs> That's how Taz says it every Taz time. Says it every the time. dicks. <laughs> they show. <laughs> there was a battle royal for a tag title shot, and out came the dicks and the Mexicals. It came down to them two, and then the Mexicals won. And Taz says, "Well, I know you think the dicks look great, Cole, but the Mexicals prevailed, and they got the dupe over the dicks." <laughs> the Mexicals versus the dicks is like dicks. 2005 Dobby summed up crazy. Dude, this is when Taz and Cole start getting salty at each other, and like, this is—I wrote all this down, Tony. Oh, it's you unreal. did? Okay, I get, yeah, yes, it's, it's unreal. Like, 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, first, let me just say, with you do have the Mexicals versus Eminem for the tag titles at Armageddon. That's why this singles yes. match is happening. Hot pay per view that we all remember. And uh, of course, yes. Melina does this thing rings out where she just screams <laughs> super loud. That's it. That's the end of it. Just screams loud. And uh, also, the crowd is dead as fuck for this. They do not care about any of this shit. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, but what were Taz and Michael Cole doing? They're arguing over the expression having words because I, I I think it was Cole that said he said they were having words after the show or something. And Taz said, what do you mean, brother, having words? What does that mean? Who says that? And Cole says, I got a question for you, Taz. When you guys are out on the on Rodeo Drive with Eminem, Eminem you know, they give you some of the, those fur coats. And Taz says, of course, I'm wearing them. You kidding me? They got double X for me. And Cole says, in a fur coat, you would look like a wild boar. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I remember this now. <laughs> then Taz says, well, when, I, when I'm running around with Eminem, you're running around with the dicks all over the place. <laughs> and Cole says, well, at least I can read a sponsorship billboard. <laughs> Dude, then Taz, like, takes offense to it and starts doing play-by-play, -play, I think. And then Yes, okay, so he gets pissed off that he says, at least I can read a billboard. Super Crazy does a roll-up, and Cole calls it an Oklahoma roll. Taz says, actually, it's not an Oklahoma roll. That's a bandito. Hell of a play-by-play -play job. I'll do your job. Don't worry about it. And Cole says, I did yours, so that's fine. <laughs> Dude, they were just smart, and I was all for it. That was awesome. It's fucking gnarly, man. It gets so crazier good. later in the show, too. So, uh, yeah, Super Crazy does the fucking bandito. I don't want to get yelled at by Taz. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, Super Crazy. I wrote a tornado. seated lava heat straw, by the way, not bandito. <laughs> That's fucking wrong, bro. <laughs> well, fuck you. I'll do your job for you too, bitch. <laughs> you just fucking were playing around with dicks. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like a reed. <laughs> That's fair, brother. <laughs> Idiot bitch. Super crazy. It's a tornado DDT off the second. Goes for a moonsault, but Johnny Nitro goes to stop him. Uh, Psychosis cuts him off, and Super Crazy hits the moonsault for the win. Um, and then all of a sudden, in the craziest <laughs> fucking thing I've ever seen in my life, hits Kid Cash. Yes, is here. Kid Cash is here and starts beating the shit out of Hoover Dude Guerrera. And Taz says, I know who that is. That's Kid Cash. And Michael Cole says, oh, yeah, he's been making his name on Velocity. What? <laughs> I think he, like, just signed, like, weeks ago. Like, is that how that works? Long. You make your name on Velocity? Yeah, you know, that's how they do it in the video games, at least. Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> I Kid, know, Cash like that. Well, Kid Cash leave TNA, then. When did he leave that? Well, he fucking hated TNA. He hated it, and he said on the radio show, fuck this place, well, he stupid ass there? show. Fucking <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> what are they doing to me? Uh, yeah, so Kid Cash comes back, attacks Hoovy, then Eminem hits the snap shot on snap Super Crazy. Yes. Uh, do you like that? Yeah, it's like, what is it, assisted flatliner? It's like a DDT. Okay, DDT. Like a, yeah, it's like a... At first, I was like, what's a scuffed-ass 3D? And then I had to look back <laughs> yeah. at it, I was like, oh, okay, it's not exactly a 3D. Yeah, it's 3D into a DDT, except very slow. Not like the three, uh, not cool 3D ever. Yeah, you know? well, no, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm sure that has nothing to do with why the crowd wasn't reacting to any of this, but... Uh, well, Eminem celebrate with Kid Cash, and then Taz says, I remember Kid Cash from ECW. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I thought he was on Velocity. <laughs> he made his name on Velocity. Yeah. That's where he ECW, did make his name. Don't fucking say that. <laughs> Dude, Kid Cash should have joined Eminem. That would have been sweet. Eminem something. Eminem K? Um, yeah, oh, M and K. M and K, mouse and keyboard. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You oh, could yeah. wear the yeah, wear yeah. the jacket and everything. That'd be awesome. Well, it yeah. wouldn't matter either way. No one's reacting to anything here anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, man. They react on velocity. Where's my velocity height tab, motherfucker? Yeah. 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 Bleed green. Who bleeds green? So Randy Orton <laughs> is backstage and uh he's just trying to shake off what happened in the ring earlier. Yeah, he's uh, in front of the mirror in the bathroom, and he's uh, says, "Put it together." And he leans down, he washes his little face in the in the sink, and he pans back up, and the and I guess it's the Undertaker. He looked kind of fucked up, but it was the Undertaker. It's a cutout. Behind him, fresh, yeah, fresh dye job on the beard, Undertaker with the <laughs> hat, uh, standing behind him, and Orton's like, "Oh," he turns around, and Taker's not there. Or I think honestly, I think Orton's just on one big trip from the man stuff to seeing shit here. I think he's fucked up. I think the Undertaker was there. He just needed to like walk down that hall a little bit and look around <laughs> the, corner. the corner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because because Taker's like peeking out of a corner. He just needs to look around the corner. Get out of my bathroom. 
Uh, anyways, Mr. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I turn up the treble. It's real loud. Wait a second. Palmer Cannon is here. PC, get it? PC works for network. PC, get it? Palmer Cannon. Dude, I said, I said, oh shit, Palmer Dude. Cannon out loud when I was watching with Deb, and she says, you are, you gotta stop making up fucking names. Palmer I Cannon, can't. I wrote it down as Paul Mercannon. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, no, 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 Paul Mercannon, yeah, there we go, I got it. Paul Mercannon, uh, I don't think his run lasts very ro- uh, long, uh, let's see. He was He's... the PC principal. That's, yeah, he was the network, which was just the same thing the ECW did. No, it's it not. No, it's thing. not. No, it's, it's not. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Maybe it's Palmer Cannon. Taz called him PC, of course. Paul Mercan. <laughs> <laughs> Cannon. Cannon. How do they write off Palmer Cannon? Uh, Boogeyman probably leave? fucks him. Big style. <laughs> Plop in the ass. <laughs> Whatever. Doesn't matter. Get off the show. <laughs> No, you want to okay. hear it happen? Yeah, no, I like his version of it. Yeah, I oh, think okay. I won the segment. Tony. No, I got it. Listen, in 2006, he flew himself home for a WWE tour in Italy. He gave notice to WWE officials citing harassment from Chris Benoit, JBL, and his wrestler's court as a reason for his resignation. It was everyone in that year. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's true. That's crazy. Yeah, that's probably true. Everyone should have quit at the same time and, for that. And, oh, by the way, this forced the postponement of the Miz's planned wrestling debut as the Palmer Cannon Miz feud had to be canceled. No. No! <laughs> Not Miz with the weird Fuck. tie. Not Miz with the hat and the weird tie. This Miz can't be, Miz with the hat and the shorts. <laughs> this this, this is a true story. The, the about who the, raw tie and the two hands go up. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> For as much as that sucked, we all remember everything about it. This is a true story about when Paul McCann flew home from Italy. (laughs) (laughs) The hand taunt. That's just so cheap. The the gloves and the hand taunt and the shorts. It was a bird sucking dick. The MTV MTV Miz logo. (laughs) That's the art Miz. (laughs) (laughs) What the heck? I hate it playing with that motherfucker so Dude, bad. Dude, I hated that piece of shit. He's so fucking <laughs> boring. Fucking idiot. Oh my god. Oh my god. Jesus. Wow. He was the worst ever. He was the worst. He's the he worst was ever. genuinely. It is the... really a miracle that that Dude. fucking guy fucking survived. How did he make it through this? I don't know, man. Dude, oh my god. god. <laughs> <laughs> Smackdown gets even better. We got a Palmer Cannon Miz feud coming in 2006, yeah. bro. <laughs> I, bet JBL, I bet JBL was ruining his life on a regular basis. <laughs> this was from the Miz eating sandwiches over the bag or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> That's what happened. And you got to go change huh. in the hallway with Palmer Cannon. Oh. <laughs> Why was Palmer Cannon out oh, there? He's, so he got, fucking, he he's like, fired, Tony. Oh. Damn. No, he quit. He resigned, bro. He resigned. <laughs> wow, man. What a fucking guy, man. Dude, 2006 yeah. wrestler's court was crazy. I'm I would have put the Miz bro. and Palmer Cannon in the dicks. <laughs> well, you can't read, you so. like, the dicks, oh, Okay, the fuck you with that, man. Anyway, right, yeah, Palmer Gannon's here. Holy shit. Palmer Gannon says, we at the network, that's a good line, hate Paul to disappoint. Palmer Gannon is here. <laughs> Paul Merck. <laughs> PMC. <Big> Paul. <laughs> Paul. But unfortunately, Mr. Kennedy has sustained an injury that prevents him from competing this evening. However, the network has found you a more suitable replacement. Do you know who's in the ring right here? He has Ray Gordy. Ray Gordy, which is also Jesse from Jesse and Festus. It's Terry Gordy's fucking son. Yeah, well, tonight he <laughs> fucked up because <laughs> he's facing the craziest bastards ever lived. The Miz in shorts. That's who said it came out. I would have fucking put my head through the wall, I think, if that would have happened. No way he's making that announcement, I'll tell you that. No. Well, here comes the boogeyman, and he's coming to get you. The boogeyman has replaced Mr. Kennedy in this match against Ray Gordy. <laughs> Instead of just canceling the match. Yeah, Ray Gordy needed the work tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is, of course, yeah, you mentioned it. Terry Gordy's son. Um, I guess it doesn't, wrestling doesn't really work out for him, does it? No, he, uh, well, he's Jesse what? of Slam Jesse. What, Slam Master and- Jay? Come yeah. on. 
<laughs> hey, buddy. I don't that. think wrestling really <laughs> No, he gave, he gave Festus drugs, you know? That was cool. That's true. That's canon. Palmer. Canon. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Palmer. Come on. Canon. Yeah, Slim, what, Slam Master J? Slam Master Slam J? Slam Master J. J. Slam Master J. Yeah, yeah well, that uh, doesn't work out too well for him, sadly. And then yeah. he retired. How did the Festus and uh, how did the Jesse and Festus they not work? It worked for Festus. <laughs> <laughs> Festus somehow is still signed. To He's shit, still got a job. Is... He's had an unbelievable amount of jobs since then. Actually, <laughs> he's had too many jobs. He yeah. actually like siphoned all of his jobs. He like he was actually not supposed to, but he took it all from Ray Gordy. Ray <laughs> Gordy was supposed to get all his jobs. <laughs> Well, the Boogeyman is here. Boogeyman made his in-ring debut October 14th, 2005. So he's like only a couple months into SmackDown here. Okay. Um, and he is quite possibly the most insane human being possible. I'm pretty sure his entire allure, like why anyone saw anything in him, was that he was legitimately a crazy, crazy son of a bitch. They didn't care that he couldn't really wrestle. They didn't fucking <laughs> really give a fuck if he hurt anybody. This dude was nuts, and he hit himself in the head with a clock and ate shoot worms, and that was enough to get you on TV. And he yeah. and he is here to eat Jillian Hall's fucking <laughs> mole thing. Yeah. And he will do it. He, he breaks a clock over his head. There's glass in his fucking head during the match. I Time said, does not matter to the boogeyman. No. No responsibilities. Well, birthdays don't either. Of <laughs> no, no, they don't. <laughs> or maybe they do. We don't really know. No one really knows. Yeah, so boogeyman versus Ray Gordy is a match that happens on this show. We watched. Uh, boogeyman eats the worms. They are real worms, by the way. Yeah, it's super long. By the way, they mentioned that these are super long worms, not Night like your crawler not like worms. your very basic small worms. These would be like your larger <laughs> worms. Why couldn't they just gimmick worms? No, there's no way. They said, "Hey, man, you got to eat these real worms." It was probably He's, his idea. Hey, I want to eat these real worms. Yeah, probably. <laughs> He wasn't even the boogeyman. He was just like a shoot name, regular wrestler. I just want to eat these Mar worms. Marty is his fucking real name, by the way. Marty Gordy. He was a tag team partner with Ray. And he said, I want to eat these worms. He said, no, you're the boogeyman now, buddy. Okay, that's good. You mind smashing a glass clock over your head, too? Oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, actually, I was actually planning on doing that. So that's well, I, You know, fine. I always do bring this clock with me. <laughs> <laughs> Full of worms. <laughs> oh, all right. I like to see him like just show up at headquarters with Vince. Yeah, I got these uh, worms and the clock and all this. Check this like out. Like the draw like segment. Yeah, Instead of like that. <laughs> breaking a clock over his head and eating worms. Oh, and doing on. the dance. Doing the you're dance. Right. Oh, yeah, I like that. I like that fucking dance. Ah. You crazy bastard! How old are you? <laughs> well, Boogeyman eats uh. the worms long style, and then. <laughs> Hits, a bunch of them. He hits the pump handle slam with the worms in his oh mouth. Oh my, Cole says. Oh my, very bluntly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Oh Taz my. is going nuts too. He's going crazy for Boogeyman. Also, Boogeyman then forearms Ray Gordy as hard as he can in the chest for some reason. <laughs> when he goes down when for, he the, pins for the pin, <laughs> which was not only fucked up that he forearmed Ray Gordy as hard as he could right in the fucking neck, but then throws the worms up in his face during the pin. Regurgitates <laughs> dirty, wet worms, shoot worms all over Terry Gordy's son. 200% <laughs> chance they did not tell Ray he was facing the boogeyman tonight. He thought he was facing Mr. Kennedy. And they said, whoa, 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 whoa boogeyman's here. <laughs> no, Mr. Kennedy, you're hurt. You're hurt tonight. Yeah, you got to get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> And the boogeyman's doing his taunt on the floor, and Taz says, what is that, brother? He's, he looks like a worm doing that. They slow motion replay him doing the worm spot, like dumping him on Ray Gordy's face, and Taz says, that is disgusting and gross. Worm juice all over this guy. <laughs> Where'd he get this guy? From the dicks? <laughs> <laughs> We like a worm juice call. You like dicks? <laughs> you, you also have to really have to. You can't read. You have to really zoom in <laughs> on how hard Boogeyman forearms right. It is crazy. <laughs> it's so egregious. Like you already won the match. Like he does not he, know how to wrestle. He hits him so fucking hard that Taz has to mention it. He, he goes, "Damn, he <laughs> fucking." Ooh, ooh. He got four <laughs> <laughs> what was that for, brother? God damn. God damn. All right, buddy. I'll see you backstage. Don't worry about that. I honestly can't believe Boogeyman never went to TNA. Me neither. It's because his rates are crazy. As yeah, hell, you're man. fucking probably right. Dude, yeah, they must are be insane. Currently building the Boogeyman to eat Jillian Hall's fucking face <laughs> thing. 
Isn't that crazy? What are the Mark. fucking plans for this guy <laughs> other than to <laughs> eat the fucking thing? That's it, man. Oh, he's fucking the boogeyman. Fuck you. Yeah, he's coming to get you. <laughs> he said that in the ring. That was crazy. So, I mean, to make things even crazier, we go backstage. Uh, Randy Orton's looking through his bags. He's trying to get the fuck out of here, honestly. Oh, I thought he assumed somebody just took a shit in it. <laughs> <laughs> so I need a sandwich in my bag. He's going to beat up Man, the Miz. He's spinning the back up. Do the top of the Is head. Is Paul the Murph here? Yes. <laughs> Where the hell's JBL? Let's go beat the video. Hey, I'm sandwich crumbs in my bag. <laughs> yeah. I must be hallucinating. It must have been the Undertaker. <laughs> It was <laughs> sandwich crumbs. So Randy Orton's looking through his bags. Oh. Now his dad, of course, Bob Orton comes Bob. up. And, <laughs> Bob <laughs> comes <laughs> up. He says, "Hey, bro, it looks like you've seen a ghost." <laughs> yeah, he he comes up. He says, "Hey, man." Randy says, "Ah, dad, <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> dad, it's you." Bob says, "Of course, it's me." And Randy says, "Ah, uh, yeah, Randy looks like you like James. It looks like you've seen a ghost." And Orton says, uh, or sorry, Randy says, Undertaker's got me, man. He's in my head. Then he looks back. Bob Orton is bleeding profusely, <laughs> twitching, and spooky Among Us music is fucking playing. Dude, this is the most Sam Raimi ass scene I've ever seen in WWE history. It's this is like legit out of Evil Dead or something. This was awesome. I was like, I couldn't believe they did. They like committed it was crazy looking. this much. This yeah, you really have to see was- this to believe it. Type I was thing because dying laughing. Bob Orton's face, like, yeah, he's going crazy Sam Raimi style. Like, this could have yeah. very easily been an army of fucking darkness <laughs> bullshit. Like, for real. <laughs> Druids, yeah. Um, but it was, it was it was an illusion, of course. He's not actually bleeding. So no, no. It cuts back and then he goes, Whoa, what the what happened there? And then Bob's like, You good, man? <laughs> no, right, I'm not bro. fucking good. I have sandwich crumbs. I got the Undertaker <laughs> fucking coming for me. <laughs> Look at my hair. Dude, this is yeah, look at that fucking I mean, look at the Miz. <laughs> so we go from the Boogeyman versus Ray Gordy to the Sam Raimi Bob Orton scene to the tag of the night brought to you by Tag Body Spray for Guys, which is uniquely designed <laughs> to attract the lady. You hey. just forgot about Tag Body Spray until this thing. Their their slogan was you spray it and then women like attack you they attack oh, you they I, I believe that i thought that was true did it work no man oh no. what the fuck you should yeah. sue. you can sue we can still sue we might have to do a class actually these dudes because if anything yeah, it made it. me smell like shit throughout the day Dude, which was that's egregious. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm out here trying to attract the ladies and i try yeah, to nothing man. That's okay, <sighs> but though, you know. anyways the the tag of the night which you would think would be a tag team move it's not no. Booker T dives over the announce or <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris Benoit dives yes. over the announce table Bleeding. and attacks Booker T. He then puts the cross face on him and then a random moaning noise goes off as this tag <laughs> body <laughs> spray yeah, yeah. starts oh, no, spreading. No, that's okay. yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> that's what that's what <laughs> sprays. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Benoit Benoit's bleeding cross facing Booker on the floor. You thought it would be like an Eminem like move, like what they did earlier or something the sure. tag of the night. No. No. Well, cause Benoit, uh. they, I think I think it was just before <laughs> <laughs> Just before that they showed Benoit walk into the ring, so I guess that's makes sense, but still, yeah. Tag and axe egregiously lying about women. I wonder if this is like I wonder if like this still has that smell, like that. Fresh off the court during Would recess, you know? still got two classes left at school. Sweaty as hell, and I smell like shit the rest of the day. I smell. <laughs> Why put recess with classes left afterwards? Yeah. Layering sweat with this fucking body spray was the move. No showers and fucking <laughs> recess. You know, look. The boys walk into recess. Recess it's a, after it's gym. It's different, man. All the lights, all the lights. That's the boys walking into fucking recess, you know? Like, we're going in for fucking play, all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a little cold outside. We're going to play a little bit of basketball inside. You know, it's feeling good outside. We're playing fucking full on contact, destroy all in sight football. Dude, I don't know how we were allowed to do that shit. I don't know if you still can in school nowadays. I don't know. No, but yeah, we dude, were I, fucking obliterating each other. It was, it, recess was like, yeah, you're going out here to get your fucking ass kicked, and it's going to be awesome. We're coming back from fucking recess. We are fucking banged Concussed. up, bruised, <laughs> crazy style, <laughs> leg broken in half. We got three <laughs> classes left. <somehow. laughs> that was awesome, bro. Yeah, Smell like shit. Yeah, dude. That it's putting on the tag for the ladies. You know what I mean? Yeah. The ladies, yeah. Like, you guys like this. Ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, man, that was different times, but I miss that shit. I look back on that fondly Dude, we can now. still do it, bro. I'll come over and play some Dude, football. I swear to God, if I got tackled in a football game, <laughs> my body would explode until <laughs> <Me too>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wow. Thank you, Tag Body Spray, for bringing those memories Yeah, shout out Tag Body Spray. Oh, yeah. Bring the bag. It was Different times. Bizarre. Anyways, Tag of the Night, Chris Benoit over the announce <laughs> table. Uh, uh. So now it's time for Chris Benoit versus Booker T. Match three of the best of seven. And they show it, uh, the little scoreboard thing on the, the side Tron, which I thought was cool. It showed Booker two, Benoit oh, zero. Okay. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Taz on commentary keeps talking about Charmel's crown and says, uh, I walked into a Denny's after the show because I had to meet you there. Uh, and she was in a crown there. I don't know why she, he had to specify that he had to meet Cole at the Denny's. That's why he had to go <laughs> So they did this in WCW for the WCW TV title. Um, right. It's best where, of seven. Same yes. thing, right? Right. Best of seven. Same guys and everything. Uh, I'm sure that's how they pitched it, too. It's like, hey, man, we worked this like 10 years ago. Let's do it again. Um, but Booker ended up winning uh, the best of seven, uh, and he actually ended up beating Fit Finley at the pay per view. Um, oh. From what I remember, the what sucks is like you have like the best of seven series, where you have seven like really memorable mm. matches uh, with with each other, and right. then like the payoff is like not that great. Like the Fit Finley match was yeah, fine, that's and a shame. like. That sucks, you know. It's like damn, yeah. like that, that's like one of those things where it's like you tell them, like, "All right, guys, look, we've done seven <laughs> matches to build to this. Like, you guys got to go have crazy. To do everything, yeah. yeah. What do you think that is? Do you think they legit just blow their tank by the time they get there? I mean, seven matches is a lot. It is a lot, and they but it gave a reason. I think they did on like every single WCW show, like every single show they had, yeah. featured at least one of those matches with Benoit. So like, yeah, sure. Nitro Thunder Saturday Night. Like every every one of them featured something. The uh the WWE one is uh cursed, obviously, because I guess what does Booker get hurt here or something? Because after Armageddon, Randy Orton subs in for Booker T in all these matches. Oh really? I didn't oh, is that know right? that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh Benoit and Orton have like match five, six, and seven are Benoit and Orton. Oh really? I didn't even know that. Wow, <laughs> yeah. I guess I never knew that. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't know why. I'm trying to see if I can uh, best of seven, blah blah blah. Oh, book at a house show. Booker was injured, and he didn't wrestle again until the after the best of seven series. Oh they damn! Just okay. wait. They couldn't just that wait on is, the matches, or what? Or was he really hurt? How? Uh, no, fuck, we gotta, we gotta fucking gotta get it going. <laughs> you know what kind of sucked about this was that like, I feel like this wasn't as inspired as the WCW no, 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 one. No, no, no. Like they I don't just feel like they did it. it. Yeah. yeah, I don't feel like they went out there with the idea that we're gonna make seven very good, uniquely different in, matches right or make the title here right and i don't like they gave this match a ton of time and what they did was and i hate when this happens is when you give guys a bunch of time so they go okay we'll waste the first 12 this is a 20 minute match yeah they legit like did nothing forever yeah um it which, was brutal yeah it was brutal and like i hate when and that I was happens excited for this match too by the way especially I mean, like, yeah two guys that are like very very good yeah and maybe that was on them for giving them so much time in the middle too of the time, series sure, yeah. maybe it should have been like paced a little better so like obviously they didn't want to blow their load in match three sure, right so they're yeah. probably like we shouldn't like kill it but like 20 something minutes and like you didn't do nothing in this yeah. shit I was legit like, 20 mm. is yeah i think it goes what 1853 this match fucking goes and that's like yeah. holy and like yeah the back end is fun they do a lot of fucking fun shit at the back end uh but it's still like then ah, just give man. us the fucking back end yeah give us a fucking crazy eight you know what i mean yeah for sure um i think it also became very obvious at this point in this era especially during the tape smackdown era stuff that like all right the veterans will have the time tonight and then the younger guys will have nothing in these little mm -hmm. angles and shit right and it's like yeah. it's like i mean how, fucking how the fuck are the mexicals or eminem or <laughs> the boogie like how is any of this supposed to get over you know they get like two oh, seconds the same show as this yeah, yeah it's like oh yeah chris ben juan booker t have 20 and then fucking ray mysterio and Batiste tag. have 20 yeah fuck. it's like uh yeah okay yeah you're right that's 40 minutes of a 120 minute show yeah just for the matches themselves yeah. that was bell to bell that wasn't even yeah. like the rest of it or the bell to it or any too, of it yeah, yeah. sure promos but yeah so i mean we start this off benoit's chopping booker taz is explaining to michael cole what being chopped is like because he wouldn't know <laughs> taz taz then says Bitch. maybe one day he can rip his shirt up and chop him you know he shaves his chest all the time brother he's always telling everybody maybe you can show him that big battleship tattoo of yours and then michael cole says well 
They do call me the big dog. <laughs> what? And they kick to the back of the head. <laughs> I don't remember that. Holy shit. Yeah, that was crazy, man. You should listen to that part. It was That's absurd. Awesome. And That's then uh, they go to they commercial. Call me the big dog. <laughs> they call me the big dog. Yeah, and yeah. they kick to the back of the head. Dude, uh, at one point, fucking Booker throws a sidekick that nails Benoit so gnarly. This is pretty early on, too. He kicks him. I don't know if Benoit wasn't ready for it, but Benoit, like, crumbles <laughs> into the ropes because of it. Yeah, they also, they come back from commercial, Booker shit cans Benoit into the corner, like, crazy style. Yeah, it was, he, like, missed a kick, and then I think he stood up not fast enough for how fast Benoit was running to try to catch him on a spine buster, and they both just lost their balance and died. On <laughs> that was crazy in the quarter, yeah. It was yeah. nuts, yeah. Uh, Booker hits the 110th Street slam on Benoit, and he oh, yeah. packed that shit in there crazy, man. Oh, he, he gave it, it to him. He fucked it up the first time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah he packed that it. shit in there, Gotta man. That son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, things start picking up here. Benoit superplex for a two. Whew, dude, Benoit, like, crumbles himself on this super play. He's taking him. Yeah, he took yeah, him for a ride. Yeah, that was crazy. Nuts. I love that. Uh, we get a ref bump here. Benoit gets oh. triple Germans out, but Booker reverses on the third German. He goes yes. for a victory roll, but Benoit grabs him out of the victory roll and puts him in the cross phase. That was very cool. Very cool. Um, Booker ends up tapping here, uh, but the ref, of course, is down. Damn it. Uh, Charmel gets in the ring with a chair, but Benoit stops her, grabs oh, the chair himself, and then Booker lines Benoit from behind. While he is distracted and then hits Benoit with the chair very politely. Uh, he is super then, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Booker then hits the axe kick and wins, putting him up three to zero in the series. Three nothing. They replay the finish at the end, but yeah, Booker's up three nothing. Uh, and then, if you want spoilers, they uh, they wrestle, of course, at Armageddon. Benoit does get a win, another twenty oh, minute wow. match. <laughs> I bet that one was a lot better. I sh I'm sure it was. Uh, and then after that, Benoit. Beats Orton in 20 minutes via DQ, and then Golly. he beats, <laughs> beats Orton in 10 by DQ, okay. and then Orton beats Benoit in 30 minutes to win the title. The, and and the best of seven series? Best of seven. Orton, Orton <laughs> wins the Benoit Booker <laughs> team best of seven in 28 minutes on a SmackDown. <laughs> oh, just cancel wow. the series. Why are you doing it at that point? <laughs> no, fuck no. Put Orton in it. Put the Miz in it. Put Palmer no, Cannon no, to come no, out. Palmer Cannon thing. should come Look out and say, <laughs> Boogeyman is replacing him because the network wants that would have been and insane boogeyman would have gave him like an egregious elbow or something and ben wall would have lit his shit up beyond <laughs> Dude, he would have fucking sent him fucking to hell <laughs> it would have been fucking nuts so we get a bobby lashley hype package here this is just lashley please get it right i wonder if this guy will make it well they didn't think so <laughs> 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 or they did until they didn't and then they did. He had to they go away from did. them. Actually. Come on, man. They always Yeah, I did. guess you're sure. Well, he's the real deal, of course. And he Was... fucked everyone up in Survivor Series. That's what they recap there. I don't think he won, though. He... I don't think so, either. <laughs> <laughs> like, fun... It's like Matt Hardy when he did a lot of moves to The Undertaker. He's like, you guys see this? You heard about this? He was at least a heel. So WWE Smack of the Night brought to you by 50 Cent Bulletproof. Oh, the shit. ultimate 50 Cent experience. His music, his videos, his game. Did you play that game? No. no, I never played it. I didn't it. either, but I've always heard I heard that it's absurd. Bulletproof was bad. I heard that Blood in the Sand, though, was bad. Okay, that's the one. That's the fucking one I've heard about, Blood in the Sand. Yeah. I didn't realize there's two. Okay, yeah, that makes well, more Bulletproof sense. and then Blood in the Sand, the sequel. Apparently, oh. they like took everything and made it like way better. Like They got the systems all that's a lot good. better and shit like that. So Yeah, that's 50 good. Cent. You guys, I, I know it's hard to like grasp, I guess, but like How? 50 Cent was so popular. Yeah, he was. Dude, he oh was my so God. popular. He he was he was platinum on CDs, man. Like you know what I mean? Like wow, yeah. Like just create like men. You have to understand, many men changed everything. <laughs> many men, <laughs> many men changed everything about everything at that time. Yeah, like wow. G Unit was so fucking popular. It was unbelievable. Get rich and die trying. I feel like was like everyone had a copy of that. Uh, Smack of the night though. Lashley beat Sylvain Grenier. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> so fucking the go. world is Sylvan. You don't like that? Come on. No, nah, he got beat. So Come on. Yeah, he's done. All so right. Bobby Lashley versus William Regal with Paul Burchill. Paul Burchill. He's not a pirate. No, he's just a sister fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this guy. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> so Lashley, for some reason, steamrolls William Regal here. 
I yeah, and, okay. When the match started, I was like, "Are they gonna like have Regal do like the Goldberg oh, shit here, where awesome. he's like that fucking so up Lashley sweet. to prove a, to like test him?" But no, he like kind of hit some uppercuts and forearms on him, and then Bobby Lashley says, "All right, it's time to take it home, <laughs> Exploder." <laughs> like, uh, st- dude, Lashley does the Steiner belly to belly out of the corner. It's so crazy. I don't know if I don't know if this kind of shit would work today like that. Like, I don't know if like you come in and just steamroll William Regal like that. People are like, oh yeah, he's, no, he's no next way. up. Yeah, fuck this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think it like baby face guy doing that. It's kind of difficult to do it. Yeah, think. he he just legit belly to belly him to hell twice and then hits him with a dominator, which was a gnarly looking dominator too. Uh, and yeah, people be like, why are you burying William Regal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come your, on, what the fuck is your no deal? Respect. Hashtag push William Regal. <laughs> yeah, you don't have the accolades this guy has. What the fuck? <laughs> that shit never worked. Hype video earlier with him. What the fuck are they hyping this guy up for? Yeah, so much? This fucking idiot. <laughs> Uh, so we have the Raw Rebound brought to you by Raw Magazine. And on the magazine is HBK praying, of course. To God. Of course, to not be on Armageddon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm begging. I know the buy rates. So it's the trial of Eric Bischoff on Raw. I thought we would watch this eventually, but they just did the whole segment here. <laughs> so yeah, like, okay. I, yeah, they do. I mean, I was pretty surprised at how much they gave away here. I was, like, it's I was like, oh, this looks pretty cool. Maybe we could watch this sometime. And then, like, yeah, literally they play... Everything. A- any funny part they could have possibly had from this, here it is. All of it. Should we not recap it here, just in case we are going to do it eventually? Yeah, maybe. Or, maybe not. Because it's legit the whole fucking thing. It's legit thing. the whole thing. I think we should probably save it, yeah. All right, we'll save it just so we can talk about it in the future, but it's the fucking, like, it's ten minutes. Every fucking part of the fucking angle is on this recap. I was like, damn. They I was so like, surprised. Get- I was yeah, surprised. It's the raw rebound. I was like, oh, okay, they're just showing us, oh, it's a trial, Eric Bischoff, da 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 and then it was like, oh, no, here's like the video package and here's uh, here's the actual the whole segment. If you guys want to see yeah. that. And then here's the <laughs> ending of the segment and all that. I was like, oh, OK, shit. Yeah. All right. Sure. So we'll we'll, we'll uh, recap that. At some point. All right. We apologize. Tony got hit by lightning Undertaker <laughs> style. He's not here anymore. See you in hell, boy. <laughs> so we're going to finish this one out. Duo style. Yeah. Sorry, all Tony. Right. Yeah, wait. Undertaker. I mean, he was just uh, he wasn't really taking care of business. Is what happened there, and yeah. Undertaker had You've to take him You've done it now, really. Yeah, and he's going to make a big mistake. Yeah, that's just what it is. So we head backstage. Randy Orton is about to leave the arena with his bag full of sandwich crumbs, <laughs> and his dad, <laughs> <Shit>. his dad <laughs> Bob Orton, meets him, and he says, "What are you doing?" He said, "Oh, I'm fucking leaving." He says, "You know what? Let's get out of here." But in the background, Undertaker appears on the because it's in it's near the interview area where they had like the little oval screen thing smackdown oval screen yeah undertaker's on the screen and his eyes are following orton like he's actually watching him from the screen he can see his every step this is undertaker in hell by the way (laughs) on the (laughs) screen he just took tony there and he even in (laughs) hell he still has to do his job he still has to show (laughs) up (laughs) he still has to work it's like luther in jail that's (laughs) right satan sends him back to work every friday So we had to cut to the commentators real quick so we could cut back to the pre-tape. Orton and his dad are in the parking lot going <laughs> to their rent-a-car to get the fuck out of here. Give me the remote. Give me the remote. <laughs> Come Orton, on. Orton opens up the trunk. They put their bags Randy in. Randy Orton, of course. There's two Ortons here. Oh, fuck. There's Bob <laughs> and Rand. Bob and Randy. <laughs> so Orton goes around to the front side of the door. Which Orton? <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it, man. Orton goes around to the front. All right, if I mention, if I say Orton, I mean Randy. If I say Bob, I mean Bob. <laughs> okay. All yeah, right, I like Orton, this. So Orton goes around to the Bob. front of the the door and uh bob goes around the right hand side and they both try to open each side of the doors and oh my god the car is locked <laughs> damn it can you how believe this, that did you lock the keys in the car orton says to bob and bob says no i didn't how would i do that yeah <laughs> you have the keys why would he you have the keys you're holding the key right in your fucking hand so anyways the car drives away <laughs> The car drives off slowly, and Bob and Randy just stare as it as it goes off into the distance. How'd Ghost the car. Go? Yeah, what the hell? How'd they do that? I actually don't know. Someone was down oh, low on the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> oh, pressing okay. on the joints. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no one's in the fucking car. It drives away very politely and nicely and makes its way yeah. straight down the path here. 
Uh, and for some fucking reason, Josh Matthews was watching all of this and then also approached them in the parking lot with a microphone. <laughs> now you say it was nicely and gently. I wish I wish you would have just spit off and smashed into something. That would have been yeah, so just better. fucking steamrolled into a tree. Or <laughs> yeah, it fucking explodes. That would have been so much cooler. Undertaker just very slowly drove a car away. But yeah, he puts it in the first and fucking just goes yeah, like they, real they nicely. Destroy his real car. <laughs> Orton put you in the back of a lowrider and blew you up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyways, I'm going to take care of your rent car. I understand, you know, Hertz is a big deal, you know. I'm going to take it back to the fucking dealer. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, Josh Matthews is in the parking yeah. lot with a microphone here. Uh, he's getting the scoops, you know what I mean? The scoopsman Josh Matthews. One T is his last name, by the way. <laughs> one T. I always write it one T, and it always looks fucked up. It does look <laughs> fucked up. And he looks fucked up here. He looks like a mini Randy Orton, here, actually. With hey, the with the hair? Yeah. Yeah, the tips. <laughs> Josh Matthews comes up with hair. Bob Orton also here for interview because no one's getting that fucking car. <laughs> His arm is fine still. Yeah, of course. But he apparently has hepatitis or something. I, I, <laughs> well, he did. Or did. We don't know. Maybe not, brother. He was just bleeding all over Randy in the fucking locker room. So I don't know, brother. Oh, yeah. All over the place. You're right. <laughs> Uh, so, Randy, uh, you and Undertaker step inside for Hell in a Cell. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 So, Bunch Randy, you and Undertaker <laughs> step in. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Josh Matthews gets fucking possessed by the Undertaker. And Undertaker's. Oh. Under he legit. Dude, it legit looks like Josh Matthews is fucking coming the entire time. Like, this is crazy, man. Undertaker's wow. voice is coming out of Josh Matthews' mouth, and he says, Enjoying the ride, Randy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he's, he's fucking coming in his little pants. Well, the highway to hell doesn't stop until you come. To a dead end, Armageddon, hell in a cell. Josh Matthews is saying this. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> then Josh Matthews shakes out of it, comes back to normal and says, what are your thoughts? What about it works for you? <laughs> yeah, What's that? <laughs> what do you mean by that? You know, what What about it works for you? <laughs> I don't understand the question. <laughs> well, Randy very slowly backs away and Josh Matthews with one T looks at him very confused. Yeah, that we're going to worry the, about that I car. that. I remember that velvet. No, don't worry about the fucking well, the car. Just got dropped off at the fucking rental place. It hurts. And it, yeah, at they, the airport. Yeah, he, he, he actually he took it, filled it up, got the gas all fucking wow, ready for it. Wow, filled it up so you had to pay. That's <laughs> yeah. nuts. Wow, he took care of him. U-Haul man. style, man. That's he awesome. Was very, it was very nice of him. Yeah. And, Josh uh, Matthews did, also, when he approached him, didn't care about the car riding away. No, that was normal in Josh Matthews' world. <laughs> yeah, with one T in his last name. <laughs> Everyone's constantly stealing Josh Matthews' car, so oh, he's used to that. Oh, <laughs> Randy. Uh, <laughs> how's your lips, Randy? Ow. Oh, they're fine. How's mine? <laughs> oh, yeah, they're fine, too. Uh, okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's good. Yeah, this is a pretty interesting segment. I, You know, I have to say, I... I thought it was very funny i thought this it was a very was i don't know if fun. exactly they were going for funny they were definitely going for campy though mm -hmm. and i think they hit that on the head uh my favorite one of the night has to be the blood on bob orton's face Sam on bob, style. I, I remember the josh matthews one vividly though but the blood on bob orton was pretty fucking funny yeah, dude the, that shit was gas yeah that was for <laughs> real man i like that a lot that was cool i was expecting them to do one more because it I, it looks like orton and bob orton go back into the building after this they don't leave obviously because their car is gone dude it is gone and they're not getting so, out of here yeah no but they that's that's the end of the orton taker stuff on the show which upsets me upsets me greatly well, because of what comes after well this. Orlando Jordan needs a 20 minute main event <laughs> come on bro die down dude is it 20 it fucking feels it like it felt like it uh, I be. will say Smackdown is brought to you by PlayStation Ooh. 2 yeah Burger King yeah and K-Swiss oh did I get shit. that right Michael Cole <laughs> <laughs> yes you did <laughs> yes you did bro yeah they uh, uh there's yeah, a hype man. video huh what was that I was gonna say the fucking main event man Yes. Well, there's this a hype video tough. before that for Big Show and Kane, who are on a path of destruction, choke slamming everyone to hell, including Batista and Ray. And here are some of the matches you can look forward to at Armageddon, James. Holy shit, man. I, so I, you, I can only imagine how good this pay per view was. So you, I kind of do want to watch the Taker Randy Orton to see if it was a complete shit show. I don't I, know if I've know, ever seen it. I definitely have seen it. I just don't remember it. Like in my uh, mind, like there's so much 
fucking bullshit going on. Like, I imagine, like, there's fucking lightning and smoke and fucking... Well, if they just have a regular match, I would be so beyond fucking pissed. Well, how you do will you, ruin how, my fucking life, I promise you that, buddy. How does, how does it make you feel to know that it was a 30-minute match? It had to be 30. I mean, they got to get the fucking smoke in there. They got to do the <laughs> punches in the corner spot, lightning, you know. Someone's got to fall off the hell in a cell, right? That, I mean, I don't want to give it away for you if we're going to watch it. Yeah, so we I'll, should watch it eventually. We should. Um, so they, they say some of the matches here lineup. Do you want the whole card though? Cause I have the actual card. Um, no, you can tell me what I, I don't want to know the whole card, but what was, okay, what okay. they, well, the show? they They said here, Batista and Mysterio versus Kane and big show. I don't know if it's for the tag titles. I think it might be, but they're the raw tag title. So I wasn't sure. It's or, SmackDown versus raw. Yes. Yeah, so I don't. So I think it's no tag titles. I think it was just brand supremacy. Of Jesus course. Christ on Armageddon. Chris Benoit. <laughs> Chris Benoit. Yeah. Right. And SmackDown <laughs> pay-per-view. Uh, Chris Benoit versus Booker T, match four of the best of seven. Uh, Eminem versus the Mexicals, and of course, Randy Orton versus Undertaker. Hell, yes, hell. They were banking on that some bitch, huh? That was the fucking crux, if you see the rest of this fucking What was the one rating for uh, Undertaker versus Randy Ooh. Orton? Let's see. I'll find it for you right now. Uh, yeah. What do you think it was? That's the, that, I'll ask that first, and then we'll... Uh... I'm going to say it's three and a quarter. They worked hard. Okay, three. That's a fucking pretty solid... Yeah. Well, somehow, 30 minute hell in a cell fucking sold the pay-per-view randy okay. orton at least was probably trying to do some work i imagine it got a three and three quarters oh is it even <laughs> higher than i thought <laughs> wow all right I, I was close yeah yeah wow. I, I assume i assume it was uh um uh, they're working you know like they're working <laughs> really <laughs> Hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, uh, wow, you were fucking almost on the nose there. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that's usually how those kind of shits go. Like, I assume they probably didn't do, I didn't burn the house down or anything. But sure. I mean, really, at the end of the day, if you work hard, then he does give Booker and Benoit a four. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So, uh, 2005 four is not bad at all. It's pretty fucking no, good. No, a different five. scale back then. Yeah, sure. five four is awesome. <laughs> yeah, getting even close to a five back then was almost impossible. Yeah, you can like if you weren't like no Masala chance. level fucking yeah. performance, you weren't getting you weren't yeah. touching four and a half. Joe you know and, what I mean? yeah, I, dude, yeah, Joe and Punk in ROH getting five was like an earth shattering thing to have. It was. It it absolutely fucking was. One hundred percent. Changed the game. TNA same way. The unbreakable joint. Yeah, like, that was like whoa. What the? It was fuck? such a big deal. TNA mentioned it often. You know. Mike Tanay was constantly fucking <laughs> Dude, down in that shit. Very yeah. often. Yeah. And Hell then yeah. the next next shit out of fucking Jared's mouth was fuck Dave Meltzer. <laughs> that idiot. And, oh yeah, by the way, we got a five star match. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, come on, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we get the main event of the evening tonight: JBL and Orlando Jordan versus Batista and Rey Mysterio. The uh, at the very top here, where there's some fun Cole and Taz stuff that had me. I was I legit listened to this five times. It made me laugh so much. Cole says uh, JBL should just use some Visine for his eye, and Taz says you don't use Visine for an eye injury, brother. You got to flush the eye out. It's a real injury. <laughs> Cole says, well, you know a lot about fluid in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that was egregious. That was crazy. Yeah, well, you suck dicks. <laughs> well, fuck you. At least I can read. <laughs> dicks. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, <laughs> dude, that was on. I was like, dude, they, these two, they really think nobody's watching the show. How are they getting away with the Tate dicks Smackdown. and fluid in eyes? They were yeah. chilling, yeah. <laughs> Paul Cannon, come on, brother. Yeah, Paul, okay, Paul Cannon is fucked up. Yeah, that Paul Cannon. Did you like Ray Mysterio? Did Ray have the same facial hair on the way to the ring earlier? Did you even notice this? No, I didn't. Ray has bleached 619 on his chin. All right, I gotta look. <laughs> Is that right? Yes, please go look. It's on the link. Yeah, I yeah uh, it's. I, I'm I'm almost I'm like ninety five percent sure it's bleached because the color is so crazy looking. I don't know if he had. I'm gonna look to see if he had it earlier in the night, but he absolutely had it here. Bleach like bleach beard or like yeah, he, like go like goatee. Like it says oh wow, six no, one nine. I didn't see that. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to see if okay. he has it in his entrance earlier. He right, does. He, he does fucking have it. Unless it's not. Unless it's just paint. I swear it's. It, but he, it does say six one nine on his fucking chin, though. <laughs> oh my god, dude! It looks like he just drew it on. Are you sure that's a beard? I, I swore it's it was just under his bottom not. lip. It just says six one nine in yellow. <laughs> in yellow, and he's in red and yellow gear. He's a fucking Ronald McDonald looking motherfucker, man. Yeah, this is Ray all tatted up, crazy six one nine on the fucking beard. Like, <laughs> this is a different Ray Mysterio than two thousand like two. <laughs> trying shit, yeah. 
<laughs> He's, what, what can get me into the main event? <laughs> Maybe Something's six one out of my you, chin. <laughs> six one out of my chin is what the fuck they were looking for. Wow, I don't know how you noticed that. That's nuts. It was because I, I don't. It just yeah, I'm fucked in my head. <laughs> yeah, man, that's crazy. I won't even look at that dude like that. Well, speaking of fucked in the head, James, this match is fucked in the head, and that's why this gets my deadlock plus 10 on the night. Do, 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 do. Dude, that's crazy. I also have some news. This was my deadlock plus 10 <laughs> match <laughs> of the night. Come on! Yeah, come on! Dude, I legit wrote down, is this about to be my deadlock plus 10 of the night? Then Orlando Jordan starts to get hit, and I wrote, I was starting to get heat, and I wrote, yes, it is! Plus 10! Good lord, the heat in this was unbelievable, man. God damn. This feels like a million years. I tried to fucking, like, stop and see some shit going on. They come back from commercial. Orlando Jordan is still getting heat. Um, at one point, Ray goes for a dive on the floor, and JBL pulls Jillian in the way, so Ray just lands on his feet. Then Jillian smacks the dog shit out of him, and big JBL big boots him to hell, and Cole yells, oh, my! <laughs> Dude. I, my first sentence on this was, I can't fucking believe I'm seeing this as the main event. First off, that's <laughs> egregious. SmackDown's already the shitter again. It's 2005. Yeah, for real. Uh, I will say Batista's super over. He is unbelievably over, man. Ray's pretty fucking over, too. I mean, like, SmackDown fans love SmackDown. They bled yeah, blue. That's true. They we out here the raw. Shit. R.A. Dub. Yeah. R.A. Dub. <laughs> Raw's for the boys. Come on. <laughs> Fuck with me, Tony. Kane and Big Show. <laughs> 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 They're gonna win, Brent Supremacy. Yeah, that's for real. Bro. John Come Cena's on. over there. Come on, man. Yeah, man. God damn. I got to get yeah, plus ten for sure on this bitch. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, uh, Ray hits a seated senton on JBL, but Jillian gets in the ring and goes to hit him with her clipboard, uh, but gets caught. Then Ray bumps JBL into Jillian, and they both end up in the six one nine position, not sixty nine, just six one nine. And Ray goes for the six one nine. JBL moves, so Ray only hits Jillian with the six one nine. <laughs> then he goes to West Coast Pop JBL. JBL backs up and trips over Jillian, who's dead in the ring. And then he starts selling his leg big style. And Taz says, oh, brother, it might be a meniscus tear <laughs> or ACL or PCL. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I hear you. Which, which leads to Orlando Jordan glomming Ray from behind. Uh, JBL is injured, so he limps all the way to the back. He's on the ramp, limps all the way to the back. Orlando is distracted by this. He can't believe that JBL would leave him. Uh, Orlando turns around, Ronald into the 619 position, gets hit with the 619. Batista spine busters them. Then Batista and Ray both do the ultimate warrior rope taunt. That's Ray so <laughs> fucked. Wow. Ray did it on the second rope. That shit was so... <laughs> I was lit. I was about to start fucking doing it myself. Yeah! <laughs> it was crazy. The crowd uh, that got shit fired was the hype. fuck up, bro. Yeah, that was hot. And then Batista bomb on Orlando Jordan for the win. Ray Mysterio and Batista get the win going into their Armageddon match against Raw's tag champions Kane and the Big Show. Why the fuck... Did Batista turn on my man? Well, it was Ray's fault, man. It was supposed to be his friend. I am your friend. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, you try to give macho advice. <laughs> <laughs> that's just crazy, man. So when does the Ray and Batista, when does that feud 2009. happen? 2009. Is it 09? Okay. Yeah, it's 09. And what does Ray do that Batista doesn't think he's his friend? As they were still friends, Batista and Rey Mysterio got set to challenge The Undertaker for the World Heavyweight title. Okay. Alongside CM Punk in a fatal four-way at Bragging Rights 2009. Okay. During the match, it looked like Batista was getting the pinfall victory over The Undertaker and winning the title. However, Rey Mysterio broke up the potential uh, pinfall victory. This angered Batista. After the match with The Undertaker being victorious and holding on to the title, Batista launched an aggressive assault on Rey Mysterio in an emotional beatdown, turning heel for the first time since 2005. Oh my god. That is, is my friend. I am. I am your friend. Please let go. <laughs> I wonder how Macho felt when that happened. Changed his life. Of course, his life is. Yeah, that was done. He hasn't been the same since. No, man. But yeah, this match sucked ass. <laughs> Like yeah, no, match, it was man. bad, man. You were a big show in the purple and black joint. Dude, with Jericho and the goatee? Yeah, that shit yeah, was... Yeah, well, No mustache. You know I got you. <laughs> Dude, what a fucked up looking man. What's he up to? Like, what was he cooking? You he think, always... I mean, he was always trying something new. You gotta give it to him, man. He was always uh, looking for a new style of big show. He had the camo joints for a while. The camo beanie joint? Yeah, camo beanie as well. Yeah, he, uh, he had like... One where it looked like he was like a he was a cake like it was like two strips of chocolate down the sides of his gear. <laughs> I don't know cake is guy. crazy, wow. dude. I found this crazy. <laughs> Here's Big Show, Jericho, and Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> dude, no mustache is like nuts. Wow. 
And he also wore he had goatee and blue gear, I guess as well. well I don't no, remember. This he had one. the joint a little shag? further down, further down the chest. It definitely got more and uh, lower and lower as he uh, as he went on. Uh, yeah. His AEW John is like full body, isn't it? Just no it sleeves. Is, yeah, it is full body. Yeah, full for body, sure. no sleeves. We saw his only AEW match in person, and that shit was heat. <laughs> <laughs> It's all, it's all that ever he needed wait, to be. He waiting. He still got it. Come on. <laughs> Him and Mark Henry waiting for that, that tag team that run. That run. They're looking to yeah. fucking beat Kane and Big Show of 05, bro. They got it <laughs> in them still. That would be heat guaranteed. Hell yeah, I the know guns against Big Show and Mark yeah. Henry. Yeah. Dude, yeah, yeah. Come That's on. A Bullet Club goal. That's a collision. <laughs> collision files. Let me hear it. <laughs> Well, sadly, that wasn't happening in 2005, but that is <laughs> what was happening in 2005. Batista and Rey Mysterio uh, getting a win over JBL and Orlando Jordan. Huge Jillian win. Hostel is a big thing on her face. Kid Cash Boogie is Boogeyman is going to eat that shit. Boogeyman's going to eat it. Kid Cash is doing great on Velocity. <laughs> we got to uh, watch that. What the hell does Boogeyman eat that joint? It must have been in a match, right? Boogeyman yeah. eats Jillian Hall. <laughs> oh, I found it. It's, it's, it's a SmackDown. Okay. In it's, it's next month. Oh, right. <laughs> Wow, it's so soon. Dude, wow. we got to dedicate a whole show to that one. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that episode's got to be gas, too. I know there's probably a crazy good main um, event. It's probably, it's probably the same main event. <laughs> Yo, what? <laughs> okay. That's wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah, wait, 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 wait. Let's see, make sure. I'm looking at this right here. Broadcast date. What, what date is broadcast? 13th. Wow. Okay, dude. Yeah. All right. I won't say nothing, but this is like pretty, pretty crazy. Okay. It, yeah. 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 It, it actually we'll is it's one of the things we talked about earlier. Real? Oh fuck! I don't want to. Oh fuck! Okay. We'll write that down. We'll write that down. Yeah. Okay. Sure. But uh, that is it uh, for this uh, SmackDown from December. What was it? December 9th, 2005. I'm so thrown off from this already. Yeah. 